gun in Washington, D.C. Police raided his home and put him in a cage for over three months. He was released from jail last fall when he pled guilty to unlawful gun and ammunition charges. He has since finished his first book, Freedom, available on Amazon.com. The Department of Justice has released new information detailing the process they claim led to the arrest of Ross Ulbricht, the alleged identity behind Dread Pirate Roberts, founder of the Silk Road Marketplace. Ulbricht was arrested in October of 2013 at the San Francisco Public Library for allegations of drug trafficking, computer hacking, money laundering, and engaging in a criminal enterprise. The DOJ stated they did not violate Ulbricht's Fourth Amendment rights when they gained access to the Silk Road servers because they claimed they tracked the servers through a leak on the website. The DOJ statement said the leak was due to an apparent misconfiguration of the user login interface by the site administrator. The apparent leak led the authorities to the server through the IP address. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Now accepting Bitcoin, online, rrbi.co, or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Our very own Tracy met farmer Ray Kimball, who says that his horse, Franklin, has the ability to speak full sentences. When did you first realize he could talk? Well, I'd hear him saying things when I was sleeping, and then I'd go out to the barn and we'd have some real conversations. Can we talk to Franklin? Uh, he can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Say hi, Franklin. What's that? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> what, what did he say? He said, who's the pretty lady? <laughs> Aw. Franklin, do you like living on the farm? Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Did he well, say something? Tracy, you live here now. I spent a cozy night at Ray's farmhouse in a room he called the altar. I learned that the farmer has a whole lot more on his mind than just a talking horse. You are my beloved. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free. Bring up anything right here. At 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features we have there for you. Those other talk show hosts, a lot of them, they want to charge you for their websites. We don't see it that way. Just go there and enjoy it for free at freetalklive.com. And the we tonight includes me, Ian. Me, Johnny Ray. And Mark. Johnny Ray, uh, who did likely not vote uh, today. Certainly not. In the, in the primary that happened here in New Hampshire, I did. And Mark, I imagine you did as well. Uh, there were some interesting things that happened uh, during the, the James Cleveland campaign, including uh, we were threatened. Some people, I guess I wasn't threatened, but some people, including Derek Jay, were threatened by uh, campus security as we were doing outreach throughout the day, uh, giving flyers and uh, giving information to college students, attempting to recruit them to go to the polls, giving them free rides to the polls, that kind of thing. Uh, there was... Does that give you some idea how many people voted? And if so, are the numbers exciting or disappointing? Um, I don't know how many people voted the last time around. I think we're probably close to that this time It was time about around, 100 so. from what I understood. No, it was like a, it was like 150 to 200, I think. Okay. And this time there have been at least 200 votes. I know that much. Uh, but you know, I don't want to get into the minutia of it. I just was kind of recapping. Is Robin Hood go going to be a state rep or not? That's what I need to know. Well, right. You're talking about Robin Hood. That's James Cleveland. He's the guy who has sort of been the, the real push behind uh, the leader, if you will, behind the Robin Hooding effort here, which is where people save folks from getting parking tickets in downtown Keene, where if the parking enforcer is walking around, you find the enforcer, you walk in front of her. And then you put uh, change in meters. In fact, I actually had a chance to do some Robin Hooding today while I was out. was intending to be campaigning, but while I was waiting, I was one of the people that was giving, uh, able to give rides. So I was sort of there in an area in which I was waiting by my car. 
And and uh, James Cleveland's strategy is to go after the students, right? Going the after young the folks. students. Yep, we're uh, going after them with a message of legalization of cannabis, uh-huh. lowering the drinking age. There's a surprising number of students who don't want to legalize cannabis and don't want the drinking age lo- lowered, which is amazing. But they, I hope they had to walk to the polls. <laughs> Well, that's just it. If somebody uh, wanted a ride to the polls, we wouldn't know who they were going to vote for, right? So in sure. theory, we could have been giving rides to the uh, the competition. <laughs> you don't know. I'm sure you did more than once. <laughs> well, I only gave two rides. So oh, okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't mean you specifically. I meant you as a group. Right. So You plural. Mm, yeah, I don't know what happened. You know, so we'll I, call the second person plural. Anyway, so you know that was fun. Uh, Derek J. ended up getting <clears throat> basically thrown off of campus. Oh, we've got somebody on the line. There's... <laughs> we'll get to that. Derek J was basically thrown off of campus uh, today, uh, and they never threatened me or Chris Cantwell or a couple of the other folks that were out there helping out. So after Derek J was kicked off, three of us went on the campus and continued to hand out flyers as none of us had been threatened, and nobody messed with us. We were on there for you know a solid hour and a half without any issue whatsoever. So Derek's got video of the threatening going down, and I got video of the ridiculous behavior of the parking enforcer who she was upset that I was there. She didn't like that. She showed up uh, at a place where I was, and I immediately grabbed the, the nickels and the Robin Hood cards and started to fill meters, and she immediately turned around as soon as I got close, and then I followed, I turned around, and I followed her, and she turned around, and, she, uh, and I followed her, and she turned around again, and she kept turning around to where she was not actually pacing more than six or seven paces before she would turn around and then turn around again and so like she wasn't moving anywhere it's like that uh like that that carnival game where you're shooting the ducks and they turn around and go back the other way and uh you know i asked her if she feels silly when she does this at all because it was really i thought it was very silly behavior and very childish and of course i was dogging her there's no doubt about it Uh, but that's my job as a robin hooder is to fill meters and save people from getting tickets and if I'm not walking nearby the parking enforcer, then I'm not saving anyone from getting a ticket. So uh, she was getting very frustrated with me for continuing to follow her. And literally for minutes, she was just walking back and forth. And I said, is this what they pay you to do? Don't, th- don't they pay you to try to write tickets? Because at this point, all you're doing is walking back and forth, lady. So got that on video. So some interesting stuff happened today uh, out at the polls. Let's go to Dennis Goddard. He's with us calling from New Hampshire via Skype. You're on Free Talk Live. And that was Dennis clearing his throat earlier. Sorry about that, Dennis. I didn't mean to put that on the air. Sorry, I thought I was on mute. So yeah. I can't believe this. Wait, wait. You guys, wait. You guys bust college students to the polls like to, to help facilitate them voting preferably for you? Uh, for James Cleveland, who is Robin Hood. He's running for state rep here in Keene. This is awesome. I, I, I don't know if folks realize what a bugbear, what an issue it has been for the Republican Party of New Hampshire for at least a decade that I've been watching. They freak out because every year they contend Democrats, knowing that most college students are going to vote Democrat Party, have huge, big, you know, organized busing campaigns where they bus Mm -hmm. the kids from the campus to the polling place and make sure that, you know, Go team, go and vote for social justice and all these great things. Um, so it is awesome that you guys are using kind of the same tactics that that, that these people swear are causing minority Democrats to get <laughs> you know uh, seats in government. You're using exactly the same tactics to get libertarians and anarchists in state government. Well, I don't know and if it's going awesome. to. Well, I, I appreciate the compliment, uh, Dennis, and you're a sort of a, a, a political watcher here in New Hampshire. You, you really are on top of things. So I do appreciate that. But we obviously don't know if James is actually going to get elected or whether or not the busing did anything to get us any closer to uh, to the ultimate goal. But it's it's an interesting race because it's actually uh, two political newbies. The the other person he's against is uh, is a total noob and uh, in fact he's also a young person as well so the, the it's two f- people in their 20s this other guy just graduated from college last year so really it's it's kind of anyone's game even though it's it's a democratic stronghold uh that he's running in James is running as a democrat against another democrat in the primary tonight uh so it'll be interesting to see how that uh, how that pans out well there's really only two questions for any New Hampshire race um for for sort of local office or state office, um, number one is it one of those absolutely every time we elect the party X, Democrat or Republican, and you're running 
in or against that party, in, in which case, you know, you, you've already lost before you, you start if you pick the wrong fight there. But then question number two, if it's sort of a winnable race in theory, the question to ask is, has this person been a community volunteer in any way? Like, have they been helping stuff out around town, whether it be, you know, the homeless shelter, the soup kitchen, the, just town committees, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, they have a very good shot at winning. And if the answer is no, they have a very tough row to hoe. You know, um, I, I agree with you, Dennis, that that's a, a good way to go about it. But to some extent, you're going to get tainted if, uh, I mean, depending on, you know, like, I think there's some bad things that you can do, right? Like you can take some strong stands on some unpopular issues and... I don't care how many people, homeless people you help at that point, you're a bad person as far as the voting public goes. Or you can uh, be a known, like, come in and say, bum, 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 I'm a free stater, I'm here to help you, dum-dums. And um, that's going to really, you know, not help at all in any way. I, for instance, um, am a volunteer firefighter, but I don't think I get any leverage. Um, I mean, people grudgingly vote for me <laughs> because I'm the only person on the ballot for the delegate to the state convention, which is a nothing role in the first place. I happen to know that James Cleveland, the guy we're talking about here, uh, has volunteered for something called, I think it's Green Up Keen, where folks go around and like, you know, plant plants and pick up trash and things like that. So, I mean, he's certainly done things in the community, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. That alone is going to be enough to... Uh, to get him to win in a, what is ultimately a Democratic stronghold in a city where the Democrats are on high alert for the Free Staters. In fact, there's a blog here in New Hampshire called Miscellany Blue, uh, which is sort of a lefty blog. And they posted the other day, I don't know if you saw this, Dennis, but they posted some of their watched races, the, the races with people they've identified as Free State Project participants. And for our listeners that are tuning in maybe for the first time tonight, a Free State Free State Project participant is somebody like um, all of us actually on the air right now who have signed the, the pledge at freestateproject.org to make the move to New Hampshire and to get active for freedom. Anyway, this Miscellany Blue blog is I highlighted six or seven or eight races that all have Free Staters in them running as Democrats. So there are Free Staters running for as Republicans and running as Democrats. And some of the old, uh, old guard in both political parties are very upset about this. And I know, Dennis, you were calling for some reason, so we'll get to that here if you, uh, you want Want to stick with us for uh, some more analysis? You bet. Dennis Goddard with us here in a moment. We'll give you more. You can share your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. Plus, the seven strangest libertarian ideas. We will continue that list coming up. Attention. Renew is currently seeking participants who are dealing with stress and unhappiness. If you are experiencing one or more of the following symptoms, you are eligible to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of the mood-boosting supplement, Renew. To be eligible, your symptoms may include fatigue, hopelessness, tension, negative mood, anxiety, or lack of sleep. Renew is an all-natural, doctor-recommended supplement that will help boost your mood and give you more energy right away. Renew has been featured on Oprah and The View and has already helped over a million people feel better naturally. Now you are eligible to participate in the free trial if you or someone you know are experiencing symptoms of stress and unhappiness. Call now to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of Renew. To participate in the Renew trial and get a free supply, call 1-800-553-7444. 1-800-553-7444. Call 1-800-553-7444. 1-800-553-7444. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. 
You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free here. At 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Oh, wait a minute. Our phone lines are broken. <laughs> that's right. Uh, the board op told me. I, I did give those numbers before, Mark, and I don't think you caught I've, me on yeah, it. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, the phone lines are broken, so I'm going to give you alternate numbers tonight. I apologize for anybody who actually tried to call those numbers in the first segment. Uh, alternate number, 603-435-1105. That's 603-435-1105. So you have no toll-free option tonight unless you are using Skype, which, of course, should cost you nothing. In fact, this might be a good night to get Skype set up and operating. Maybe you've been thinking about installing Skype on your phone and calling Free Talk Live with it. Well, go ahead and take the time to download the app and get it installed. Then send us a contact request on Skype, and it'll be approved. It'll be easy for you to reach out to us uh, in that way. From that point forward. So again, Skype username is lrn.fm. Drewsdefense.org. That's where you can go to support Andrew Jones. He's a Free State Project participant who has been charged with being one of the administrators of the Silk Road, the underground drug and black marketplace. He's facing life in prison for allegedly doing something that actually brought good to the world, that you know made the black market a safer, better place. If that's what he did. Maybe he's an innocent man. I don't know. But either way, I support him and uh, I've contributed. You can do that over at DrewsDefense.org. He's facing serious federal time over this. And if you care about the war on drugs, you want to end this insanity, please go to DrewsDefense.org to help out Drew. Again, DrewsDefense.org. Well, we got the numbers back on the James Cleveland Robin Hood campaign Many hours were spent on this campaign in an attempt to rally what I was hope you know what what would have hoped to have been a hundred plus voters would have been nice to have gotten a hundred votes in this campaign. It's a it's um it's primary season here in New Hampshire. For those of you listening to the show for the first time, the Free State Project is something that's that's a thing here. Free uh, Free Staters are people who have moved to New Hampshire to get active for the ideas of freedom. And some of them are getting active by running political campaigns. There's things like civil disobedience, etc. But right now it's political season. And some folks are running as Republicans, others as Democrats. Today, our friend James Cleveland, uh, a.k.a. Robin Hood, has uh, not succeeded in his quest to reach the state house. Not remotely. Uh, He got 30 votes. And the competitor, who is a political newcomer like James, both political newcomers, 
the competitor got 120 votes. Well, he might be the uh, the best uh, Liberty candidate you guys have run in Keene. He got 20% of the vote. <laughs> you know, that's not an unusual amount, though, uh, Mark. I think uh, Julia got like 24% a while back. I think uh, Andrew Carroll, 20. who also ran, got in the 20s as well, so it's not unheard of. So it doesn't really seem like he got more than he would have gotten had he not spent hours and hours and hours campaigning. That That's the thing with running with politics. Well, he ran, ran in Ward 1, though, so he might very well have gotten more by the work he did. He just didn't he get enough. Have. And he this is have. really the— He may the, have gotten an extra 10 or 15 votes. I don't know. Maybe it would problem, have been three votes if he hadn't have done all the campaign. The problem with voting is, is that you have this real inefficiency that goes on. I don't know how many billions of dollars are spent per year— um, or you know, per every four terms, yeah. four year terms on advertising. But think about it for a second. The Republicans they run their ads. The Democrats run their ads. The PACs run their ads. The super PACs run their ads. It's all this yickety yakking going on into space. And at the end of it, the guy who has one more vote than the other guy takes everything away. And so all the yeah. effort that the loser put in is a complete waste of time. And frankly, most of the effort the winner put in, because all well, he was trying to achieve do is achieve one more vote than the loser. That's not always a it's not always a true statement that it's a complete waste of time. For instance, I've been running for governor here and uh, I've put no time whatsoever, virtually no time. I mean I've most I've, candidates I've aren't some, running principled campaigns. Right. I've answered some questionnaires and I'm running a principled campaign, so everybody I reach with the ideas of freedom I think is is worth the effort. Uh, but Dennis Goddard is back with us. He's an early mover for the Free State Project. And Dennis, what was it you were calling about tonight? So I got to vote for not one but two Free Staters on my uh, Democratic primary ballot today. Oh, okay. One of them was, of course, you for governor. That felt kind of cool. I actually took a little picture because it was kind of neat, right? <laughs> Ian Freeman and a little thing you can mark next Aww, to. So thanks. I thought that was cool. I took a picture of that and posted that up on the Free Talk Live website. So have fun. Great. Um, and then the other was a guy that I know actually uh, – Another free stater that's running for – I forget what he's running for, but it's some sort of political sort of functionary type, type office like a register of the probate or, mm -hmm. or something like that, commissioner of deeds, something like that. Um, but hey, two free staters on the Democratic ballot, and those were I think out of three contested races, you know, two of them you had, you had a free stater. Um, That's a good sign, right? I mean, it, that uh, that liberty activists here are doing this stuff. We're getting on the ballot. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to win. I have no chance of winning against the incumbent Democrat for governor. But free staters but, are winning. I mean, I would hope so. We don't know. The, the well, results haven't come back. Well, no, no, no. no. Free staters. Yeah, I'm talking I mean, about we, dozens and dozons of free staters over have the won years, uh, yes. offices. Yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure the people who want to move for the Free really State the Project by, by going to sign up right now at freestateproject.org understand that this is the only way that people who are of a liberty mindset are ever going to win anything because you guys have lost every in all 49 other states. Yeah, well, the big yeah, question there, there is. There are typically at least a dozen free staters in the House of Representatives. Well, that's the big today. question tonight, I think, Dennis, is will there be a dozen after tonight? Will there be more than a dozen or fewer? Because I think in the last election, the number of free staters went down by one, if I if I recall correctly. It did. And, you know, a lot of free staters, I, I'm surprised it went down that little. A lot of free staters rode in on a very sort of uh, limited government Tea Party Republican wave mm. about four years ago or three years ago. And, um, you know, that wave kind of reversed itself. There was a Democratic backwash. And what is just, I tell you, the biggest measure of impending success is the fact that we have more and more free staters running in both parties and running credible, real campaigns, not just on paper. All right. So wait, important question here, Dennis, um, as a real political watcher here in New Hampshire. Do you think there are more free state project participants running this year than two years ago? I know there are people who, who sort of make it their business to keep track of these numbers, mm -hmm. uh, some folks at the Liberty Alliance, for example. Um, I believe I the answer not... is no. Um, yeah, so I, I actually there are host... not as many running. No, there are about as many running. Okay. Um, I, I hosted the um, New Hampshire Liberty Alliance Liberty Dinner this year, mm -hmm. and I got that information, and I believe that it's a, it's a really right in the ballpark at about 120 Oh, wait, those aren't free, free – there's 120 free staters? NHLA endorsed candidates, excuse me. I, I guess My question I don't is really about care free about free state project I, I get where you're coming from, but I don't care that much about free staters. Okay, well, then don't answer the question. I'm asking someone who know, maybe might know uh, how many free staters in comparison to two years ago. My understanding is that it's increased, and it is something that is very yeah. much a social thing. Like if you're you – know, you move here, 
you hang out with some cool people and you're like, wow, this is so great. I hang around with these like-minded people. And then you find out, you know, a little later, like, oh, that guy is a state representative. No kidding. And, you know, maybe you go and you go and testify and you see how something works and you go, you know, I could do that. And there's a lot of that going on. It's almost like in a hideous, deformed sort of way, it's the opposite of like entrepreneurialism, but you see people just kind of picking up viral, get involved with doing this particular activity. Um, pretty neat. Dennis, uh, this is Johnny Ray. Did you say that typically there are about 12 free staters in the NH House of Reps? That has been the case the last uh, couple cycles. In, uh, in a very large body of 400, so that's about 3%. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's that's very 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 low. What are you getting? What are you getting at, Johnny Ray? We'll come back with more here, Dennis. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. It's Free Talk Live. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Following morning reports indicating that Philadelphia High School for the Performing Arts student Samantha Bylum deals with really weird social pressures on a daily basis, Onion reporters met with the 16-year-old dance student who described feeling regularly alienated from her peers for extremely bizarre reasons. If you're not up to date on the latest Urban Street Art or Esperanza Spalding albums, the other students will eat you alive. It can get pretty brutal. Just the other day, everyone cut class to go watch the Million Dollar Quartet musical at the Forest Theater, but nobody told me. Now I'm the only one that hasn't seen Lance Guest's rendition of Folsom Prison Blues. It's humiliating. According to Bylum, the school year shows no sign of letting up as she continues dealing with the everyday stresses of auditioning for the school's production of My Fair Lady, keeping up with the latest punk Afrofusion dance groups, and not having enough fishnet sleeves to wear throughout the week. Honestly, I don't know how the other students deal with it. Keep checking theonion.com for more as this story develops. This is the Onion News Network. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Talk Live. Take control toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Those numbers are brought to you by Pro XPN. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about Pro XPN. It's a global virtual private network, and your online data is encrypted when you use Pro XPN, meaning that your internet service provider will no longer have any clue what you're up to online. Right now, your ISP may be recording where you're going, what you're doing, what search terms you're entering. They may be keeping those logs for as long as five years in some cases. So ProXPN can help you uh, stop that from happening. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Get signed up. Actually, you don't have to get signed up. You just download their uh, software there, and you can get signed up for a free account. Uh, you can pay later if you want. If When you're ready to upgrade, you get unlimited bandwidth with their premium account. You also get servers around the world you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. And ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits. You also get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Not that it's a lot of money, mind you. This It comes down to about five bucks a month after you use our discount code to get 50% off the price of an annual account. The code is FTL. 50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50. If you want to save even more, however, you can pay with Bitcoin and you'll get 62% off the price of the annual account with Bitcoin when you pay with code FTLBTC. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, use code FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Uh, again, ProXPN.com slash FTL. As we continue here uh, talking about politics, Johnny Ray, you'd made a comment at the very end of the last segment, and nasty, I'm not sure what a nasty little snipe is what it was. I'm not sure what you were getting at there. You were saying that uh, there were about a dozen Free State Project participants. These are people who've moved to New Hampshire to achieve uh, more liberty in our lifetime. It's a great project. Go to freestateproject.org if you love the ideas of, of, of freedom. This is definitely the place to be and to get active. Uh, Johnny Ray, you've always been a critic of voting here on the show. But what were you getting at when you were asking about the the, the small? You were uh, you were sort of identifying this percentage, three percent or something like that, of the state representatives here are Free State Project participants, and you were mocking uh, mocking. This is what we get for listening to the janitor, by the way. Uh, yes, Dennis Dennis Goddard, the expert we had with us, was mm-hmm. uh, said that uh, historically, traditionally, we've got f- for the past many years, we've we've had kind of a a rolling group of about twelve free staters in the NH House. I would say it's been probably four years. Has it been about four years? Well, um, yeah. If if this is the fourth year, so that we're going on a third term. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, we had a success, um, and then a setback, as Goddard uh, said, um, and then you know we'll see how things go this year. I know that uh, I, I see one free stater that got voted in now. Really? Yeah. Well, that's fantastic news. Now, a lot of the uh, people in sort of the old guard of the party, and I mentioned this earlier, uh, the different parties, the Democrats and Republicans, they are very upset about Free State Project participants running in the Republican and Democratic parties. Of course, many of them might choose to run in a third party if it were actually, well, doable, if it were easier to get on as a third party. But the Republicans and Democrats have made it very difficult uh, to get on as, as a third party. And so folks are naturally going to take the path of least resistance, and they're running in the Republican and Democrat parties and uh, really upsetting people. So in theory, uh, there's all this supposed – there's this push on both sides of the aisle to out the free staters – to tell the voters to look out. Those free staters are coming in here. They're going to try to make government smaller. They're going to try to, you know, make people more free over time. And that needs to be stopped. So there have been some real uh, mudslinging campaigns that have gone on. Uh, There has been full-color printed advertisements sent out to try to smear Free State Project participant candidates. It's been very interesting. So if anything, if there's any success to this level of pushback, we'll see if that's the case this year. And I think that the you know the, that big question mark is how many free staters will end up getting elected 
Uh, and I, I'm very interested to find that out. So uh, we traditionally have about a dozen or the, for the past four years. Mm-hmm. The NH House of Representatives is a very large body uh, relative to all 400 of, people. Thank you. 400 people. And doing the math, 12 divided by 400 is 0. 0.03, which tells me that that's 3%. Mm-hmm. Which is a uh, dismal. It's it's <laughs> well. What do you expect, Johnny? Right, the Free State Project hasn't even officially begun its move yet. I mean, well, that, I don't think that's dismal at all. I think that's awesome. Okay. Libertarians <laughs> everywhere can't get elected to save their life, and no. here in New Hampshire, we've had dozens of elections. No, no, yes. no, no, no. You're falling into his trap. What are you talking his, about? He is wrong from the get go. There are 20,000 people that are supposed to move for the Free State Project. Yeah. Anybody who uh, uh, thinks about it for any second knows that half of them probably won't move. So yeah. you're talking about 10,000 people. 10,000 people aren't going to move to a state of 1.3 million and take over the government. That's a Obviously. ridiculous statement. The fact is, free staters are only the cavalry. They are the the lifeblood returning to the state, uh, you know, coming to the state to give mm-hmm. uh, to, to give excitement to people who are already of a liberty mindset here. So the the there are a, there were 120 approximately uh, liberty endorsed candidates, uh, New Hampshire NHL Liberty LA. Alliance endorsed candidates in the House uh, last year. That puts the libertarian. I'm sorry, it was a hundred like a like a hundred. Excuse me. And that puts the the libertarian veto at 20%. That's really, really strong. Most bills don't pass with a margin of more than 20%. Because you have to come to the libertarians to get your conservative bill or your liberal bill through. Yeah, I mean, that's that's not a, necessarily a true all the time kind of statement, right? Of course like, there it's was not a true gas all the time. Tax. There was a gas tax that passed. And yes, the libertarians didn't stop that, right? So well, they're... they're not all like you, Ian, yeah. and I wish they were. I wish they'd vote every issue every time. These are 80% libertarians, yeah. people who score 80% and above on the Nolan chart. They fit um and they, they fit the greater libertarian title. I just yes, think you they make went... it sound a little bit unrealistic the, the no, way that you say it. No, only to you who believes a libertarian is a voluntarist. Mm-hmm. Like you you have taken two well, words. When you say there's a libertarian veto, it makes it sound like that that thing is something that is pretty consistent and it's good like they've stopped a lot of bad legislation like for instance the license plate scanners new new hampshire doesn't have those that came up as a as a new bill 49 other states have the police with the ability to scan people's license plates with this technology that's i'm sure very expensive uh new hampshire was the only state to reject that so there are some neat examples and recent examples as well of uh of stuff that everywhere else that it gets passed but not in new hampshire and I think that's very exciting. It's an exciting time to be here. But it's certainly not an across-the-board thing. There's there's still some stuff that's getting through that shouldn't, that yeah. we need to – more work needs to be done. More people need to move here and get active, period. Yes, I just want people to understand the progress that's been made, and it is oh, stunning. Yeah. The Free Estate of the Union, as rated by the Mercatus Center, the only organization that's rating these things, uh, three out of the five times it's been rated, has – had uh, you know the has, has had a lot of progress since its last rating it's this is it new hampshire is the freedom destination for the whole planet right so check it out at freestateproject.org let's go to mike in maryland because you can bring up whatever's on your mind mike you're on free talk live hey uh thanks for taking my call i sure. uh, really enjoy listening to, to y'all show when i have the chance appreciate it uh, my voice is starting to change oh that's good that's right. right on but time at, too at any rate <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. No, uh, I, this is you know serious stuff here. Uh, I'm a news junkie and a talk show addict. Okay, that's mm, my I'm hobby. Sorry. <laughs> I know, I know. Maybe there's a 12 step group that can help right. me here. But then, at any rate, though, uh, I want to talk about the situation with the ISIS ISIL situation sure. in Syria and Iraq, and I'm following this fairly closely. And I'm sure you all have heard that you know that Assad is this evil, corrupt dictator that. We, that has to be taken out. That I'm sure you know that this, or or probably know that the civil war is not really a civil war. These are hired cutthroat mercenaries, Al Qaeda mercenaries that are being backed and trained by the CIA and Gulf state money and trained. I'm confused as to what's going on here, and I, I want you to make it clear for me here in a moment. So hang on, Mike. We'll bring you back. I'm not sure what he's getting at. Who? Where is Al Qaeda involved in God. this? I thought we were talking about ISIS. ISIL is. They were Al Qaeda in Iraq. Yeah. And then they turned into different other things. Okay. More coming up here. Just because he has the microphone doesn't make him You take control here. This is Free Talk Live. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Oh, fall. A time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvalueinn.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. You think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it. I didn't approve it. I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Hey, join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. Uh, We give them away. And if you like the show and you want to help support us, then please AMP Free Talk Live at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. The idea is to get the show to more ears around the world, bring more internet listeners on board, bring more radio stations on as well, and you can help us with that and get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, 
uh, the Amp Only Podcast, Amp Only Forum, and the Amp Only Facebook group. Go and learn more and get signed up at amp.freetalklive.com. There's a great new novel about the ideas of liberty. It's called Ant Farm. And I just recently read it, and even Governor Gary Johnson has praised it. Personally, I love the book. It took complex issues like uh, military protection, judicial systems, currency, and uh, dozens more, and explained them in these in ways that the average Joe, even young adults, can easily understand. And how these systems could work without government force, for instance, and how state intervention screws them all up. If you're tired of explaining to some of your friends about how roads could be built in a free market, just hand them a copy of Ant Farm. If you're sick of explaining to other friends about how the U.S. turned into a police state, well, hand them a copy of Ant Farm, too. Stephen Aaron Gray, the author of Ant Farm, is uh, giving away the first four chapters completely free, and that's like half the book. Go download the free chapters today, antfarmbook.com. It's antfarmbook.com. Dot com. Do it now. You're going to love it. Antfarmbook.com. All right. Toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. Let's go back to Mike. He's in Maryland. I uh, was trying to make a point about ISIS, and I had to admit I was kind of confused. You were talking about al-Qaeda. Didn't al-Qaeda rebrand uh, as ISIS? Yes. It, yes it was, it's more or less rebranded by – yeah, it was more or less rebranded into ISIS. Now, uh, on the other hand, see, because I, I wanted to preface what I was going to say about the initial reason why I called in. Now, now, yeah, it was rebranded. So now we're supposed to bomb ISIS in Syria because they're using that as a hideout, but yet it's basically the same people that were attacking Assad. So this is, you know, this is the schizophrenic foreign policy, seemingly schizophrenic foreign policy that we have. But I wanted to bring to your attention uh, a, a huge meeting attended by 80,000 people and 600 prominent politicians from the West and America. And this, this could be researched easily enough. This is from VoltaireNet.org. And Alex, InfoWars, Alex Jones had an article on it, too. It's the International Meeting for ISIL, I-S-I-L, in France. You can Google, Google this easily, and, and a bunch of hits will come up. And this is basically people, the Western nations showing support for ISIL. And it was attended by General Shelton, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General William Casey, former commanding general of Iraqi Freedom, Newt Gingrich, Joseph Okay, Lincoln, you're dropping a lot of names. What's the point you're trying to make? Well, I'm trying to. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is we we caught a red-handed the American government and the West. Who caught who red-handed? Our government and and the Western governments supporting the ISIS terrorist by attending this ISIL meeting, which is the. So uh, just to be clear, arm. hold on. What you're saying is the United States is both supporting and fighting ISIS or ISIL? Yes. Well, well, we're we're supporting and training and financing them, and now supposedly we're going to bomb ISIS. But these quite possibly are either rogue elements of ISIS that have strayed off the reservation, or if we uh, if we bomb ISIS in Syria, we're going to use that as an excuse to uh, uh, attack Assad's forces. Well, but, but this whole meeting of ISIL, which is the political arm of ISIS, was attended by tens of thousands of people, including many prominent Western and American politicians Ma and, and Pentagon elites. Mike, ISIL and ISIS are just, um, they're, they're both the same thing. It's just different names for the same thing. One of them is yeah. not the political arm of the other or anything like that. Well, uh, one, well thing, the, the, one thing that's clear to me is that um, if you bomb people enough time, pretty soon you're not going to know who you have to bomb. And that's really what the problem is here. The United States is uh, now know, now doesn't know who to kill, right? Um, do we kill Assad? We were supposed to kill Assad last year. Now this year we're supposed to kill ISIS. This is kind of what happened with the World War I situation where World War I created both Hitler and Stalin. And then they ended up fighting in World War II, and the United States had to pick a side, so they picked the side of uh, the guy who ended up killing millions and millions of his own people mm -hmm. against the guy who was going to kill millions and millions of his own people. Um, and th the difficulty, when you, when you start thinking that somehow you're going to solve other people's problems, this is what happens. 
Well, the, the, the bottom line is uh, the United States is a state sponsor of terrorism worldwide. Sure, sure. That's we, absolutely we, true. And that's, you know, that's not news. It's been like that for uh, for many decades. And I'm glad, you know, thanks for bringing this to the table, Mike. Appreciate the call tonight. Uh, this certainly is nothing new, right? Because yep. the CIA was involved in al-Qaeda in the past and, you know, the, uh, the U.S. government armed Saddam Hussein. And you know, just go on down the list. And the, the U.S. has has looked the other way when some che- Chechen Chechen extremists have have been doing what they've been doing uh because the Chechens are are enemies of our of of our quote our enemy uh Russia and there's a lot of Chechens in Syria now who are who have leadership roles in ISIS right but the Chechens bombed the uh Boston Marathon um this is <laughs> This is the problem. This is why the Founding Fathers called them entangling alliances. You just stay out of them. Let's go to Randy. He's in Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live. Randy with Ian, Johnny, Ray, and Mark. How you guys doing today? Hey, Randy, go ahead with your thoughts. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, first off, I was listening to the last caller, and I was just going to say some of the points he made were pretty good. You guys always seem to suck up to the to the powers that be. It must be because you're you're all fags. You guys look like fags. Wow, Randy, that's really brilliant and Int- very intelligent. Are uh, you at the cam at cam dot free talk live dot com? Am I what at the cam? What's the cam? Do you have a problem with gay people? Uh, how Randy? would you How would you know what we look like if you're not uh, watching us on the cam? Oh, uh, because I went to. Uh, to gayporn.com, and I see you guys on there all the time. But I'm saying, those people have not written me a check. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, calling me gay doesn't insult me, yeah. because I don't think gay oh, people are bad. I like, I like Randy. gay people. Oh, what do you, well, well, what do you have against gay, gay people? Well, Jerks, you, I think, are bad. Because you're gay. That's all you got, huh? All right, I'm tired of it. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Man, I thought the your gay insult went out in fifth grade. You know, I don't know if I've heard it since then. In fifth grade, we called them gayfers. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, admittedly, I did go to a Christian school. Perhaps we were a little, uh, you know, I see. sectioned Toned off. I don't down know. a bit, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah. I, I, it hurts me to be called a fag. Why, why is that? Do you think it's going to get you any less booty? I, well, no, but I just didn't like it. I was not expecting that from Randy. Mm, it was very rude. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I guess I'm the only one up. in the, the yeah. room that's been... I've been called gay so many times that it really can just slide right off the back. Let's go to Pete in Long Beach. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Pete. I'll slide something off your back. Yeah, you're <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Pete. Go you ahead. Know, what, hey. Well, anyway, yeah, the, uh, you know, I think it's crazy that they're going to put up a no bullying thing. You know what? What about my civil rights? Because I'm a conservative. Whoa, what, who? What? No bullying? What's your, what are you talking about? Can you give us some context here? Who's they and who's putting it up? The, homo- the homosexual community, they want to suppress my freedom of speech by calling me a bully for uh, backing up my, uh, my belief in Jesus Christ and publicly saying that. Okay, so you you are actually somebody who uh, that, that right after we just got off the line with that other guy, we got another uh, homophobe on the line here. What is the problem you have with gay people, sir? Uh, I think that they're ungodly. And when I was watching my film class at college, you know what? There's this Turkish film we saw for film class that it, it not only had a but these two this Turkish political prisoner chick making out with this German chick. That was the first incident of sodomy. But you know what? It, it, the mom condoned it. She supported it. It's, it's godless and it's inappropriate. So just to be clear, at least you're consistent. You also you do not like uh, uh, male on male gayness, and you also do not like female on female gayness. No, I don't. I don't like the pornography industry because you know. I, I think the thing him calling you a fag, you know what? That that's stupid. That's like it's, it's a straw man insult. I don't agree with you, so I'm gonna call. I'm gonna say you're ugly. It has no bearing on the context. That much we can agree okay. on, Pete. I'll tell you that. I'm interested to learn more about your perspective here because you know we've heard you call previously, and you got the name Pugnacious Pete from your uh, sort of positions about violence, where you're advocating violence. I'm glad we can talk about something different with you here. So if you don't mind, right. hang on, well, Pete. Let's talk about why it is that you think something is wrong with gay people. I'd really like to know more about that here in moments. So we'll uh, hold him through the news. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You may take control of the airwaves here. 855-450-3733. And maybe you want to talk to Pete. We can, we can arrange that. This is Free Talk Live. 
Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.03 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,256 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $471. Antiwar.com reports, Iraq's parliament managed to beat the September 10th deadline for approving a new cabinet, formalizing Haider Abadi's position as Iraq's new prime minister, replacing Nouri al-Malaki, who will now be one of the vice presidents. The cabinet is only a partial one, with the positions of defense minister and interior minister as yet undecided and expected to be resolved by next week, with a body saying he'd take either the consensus parliament choices or appoint his own. There were no previous interior or defense ministers, as Maliki held both positions for years. As a unity government, a body appears to have done a good job spreading out the cabinet positions among the various parties. In addition to getting the deputy prime minister, and finance minister spots, Kurdish participation is conditional on the resolution of outstanding disputes over oil revenue sharing, as well as territorial ownership of Kirkuk and other areas surrounding the original KRG territory, which Kurdish Peshmerga fighters have taken in recent months. The unfilled ministries remain hugely important and are likely to be hotly debated among the various factions in the weeks to come, though expect a body to keep the two spots, particularly the defense ministry spot, with Within the Shiite ruling bloc. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports, Oklahoma plans to have new execution protocols written within the next two weeks to correct for the shortcomings exposed in a report last week about the troubled execution of a convicted murderer, according to officials. The prison department aims to have all the recommendations made in the report in place and ready for the next Oklahoma execution scheduled for November, according to Department of Corrections Director Robert Patton. The report on the April execution said a doctor and paramedic failed nearly a dozen times 
times to place an IV during the execution of Clayton Lockett and were unprepared for how to proceed once the line they secured to deliver the lethal injection began to leak drugs. Department of Public Safety investigators made 11 recommendations to improve the process, including having additional lethal injection drugs on hand, additional training for medical personnel in the death chamber, and leaving the IV area of the body exposed so that it can be monitored. Among the changes underway are a fresh coat of paint for the death chamber, new seating for witnesses, and expanded medical equipment that includes a vein finder and EKG machine. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. The UK Guardian reports, Gambia has passed a bill imposing life imprisonment for some homosexual acts, potentially worsening the climate for sexual minorities in a country with one of Africa's most vocal anti-gay leaders. The bill amending the criminal code was passed last month and brings life sentences for aggravated homosexuality, according to minority leader Samba Jallo. The charge is leveled at repeat offenders and people living with AIDS. Jello said that while his National Reconciliation Party did not condone homosexuality, he voted against the bill with one other lawmaker, saying, In our view, homosexuals did not commit a crime worthy of life imprisonment or any treasonable offense. Homosexual acts were already punishable by up to 14 years in prison under Gambian law that was amended in 2005 to apply to women in addition to men. The bill now awaits approval by the Gambian president, an autocratic ruler who in 2008 instructed gay men and lesbians to leave the country or risk having their heads cut off. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after being fired from his coding position at a downsizing tech firm, 34-year-old Irvine native Sam Morrison told Reporters Monday that he believed he had finally achieved the sort of work-life balance for which he has long strived. Yeah, ever since I got fired, it just seems like my whole entire routine is just clicking. I go for jogs in the afternoon, spend nights with my wife and kid, I'm even cooking more. Everything just feels right. Morrison, who since his termination has found time to pick up reading again, eat a healthy diet, and sleep more than five hours a night, noted that his unemployment has allowed him to find a level of harmony in his personal life that he never before thought possible. For a while there, I thought that I was going to spend the rest of my life constantly worrying about getting to the office on time and pleasing my boss. Outside of the late payments on the house, the mounting credit card debt, the rapidly depleting savings, my life is essentially stress-free. I honestly couldn't be happier. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. You can bring up anything that you want. Just dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It is a primary night here in New Hampshire, so the Free State Project community is a buzz about various different election results. And, uh, Mark, you have indicated at least a couple of uh, different uh, wins for Free State Project participants, which is great news. And we'll look forward to hoping, uh, I'm hoping, that we'll have more than a dozen wins this time, which would increase the number of Free State Project participants in the State House here. Because the more people that we can get here, the more that can get active, the better. And the more success we're going to have, the more chance we'll have at seeing more freedom in our lifetime. I think that's, uh, to me, that's really important. If it's important to you, be sure you check out freestateproject.org. Let's go back to Pete. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we had Pete on the line a moment ago, and he says that he doesn't like gay people because they are ungodly. I believe that was a word that you used. And uh, you said that your free speech is being uh, oppressed or suppressed by gay people in some way. Can we address... Uh, the first issue first. Why is it that you believe gay people are ungodly? Well, wait. Well, first off, let me make something clear. I don't advocate violence. I advocate self-defense. If somebody tries to hurt you or somebody else, you can reasonably help. That's the only reason you gotcha. have a right to use whatever. 
So that's, that's another issue only. entirely. But let's let's keep focused on the uh, the issue that you brought up, which was uh, was gay people. So go ahead. The, homos- the homosexual community with their anti-bullying junk and their oh you're a bigot or you're this and that that that's a violation of my civil liberties. You know? Wait a minute. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa. What is? Hold on. What is anti-bullying junk? Are you saying you're in favor of bullying? I'm not in favor of bullying, but don't call it something it's not. Saying that somebody's a bully because they have a belief system that's against what, they're, what the homosexual community is trying to promote. That I don't think uh, someone's belief system defines them as a bully. Usually it's their actions that define them as a bully. Bullies are typically threatening or physically harming other human beings. Yeah, I think that it's the wrong thing you know to do to suggest somebody who disagrees with you is a bully. But I also that's exactly what they're doing. But well, I, I, I think that some of they, I think some of, of them do and some of them don't. Right. We've got a gay and, guy in here every Monday night, and I've never heard him complain oh, about anything God, like that. No. But you know, what, see, here's the here's the problem with it. You know what? They're they're branding all of us Christians as over hate mongers, that hate speech, and they're trying to erode our First Amendment. I've never heard a gay person them. tell me that. Let about me do Christians. a little Christian branding here, if I could. It's not that I've spoken I've spoken to every Christian, but I I have noticed in the Christian community, if we're going to just use sweeping uh, generalizations here, a real um, concern about the sin of uh, you know being gay as opposed to every other sin. Now you live in the world, right? And the world world is full of sin. That's what this place is about. Now, I, what I don't hear the Christian community doing is making a big fuss about beer commercials or uh, women in That's bikini wrong. on TV or all. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying you don't say that, but you didn't call in about it, right? Like the thing you called in about is the freedom of sp- the gay people are calling me a bully. Well, that's because well, you're talking about gay people. You're not talking about women in bikinis on TV. And that's because the Christian community has a focus on sodomy as a sin. Like they're really concerned about this real the real christian community not the you know mega church publicity junk but the people that are going to do all the king james bible all or nothing you know what they they hate pornography we're against drug abuse we're against abortion we're against a whole bunch of issues you know i mean now wait just to be clear are you against uh drug abuse or drug use Drug use, if you use it as a medicine, that's fine, but it becomes idolatry if you use it for any reason but medicinal use. And what about you, alcohol? You know, Alcohol, if you if you know your limits for and you have five, <laughs> that's when it's a sin. Okay, what There's about nothing caffeine? wrong with drinking wine. So 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 it's 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 okay to Jesus to, is cool with to, wine. to mellow out with a but glass of wine. It's not okay to mellow out with a, a joint, right? They're saying uh, you, that joint, whoever Mark. said you're mellowing out when it becomes more than a drink and it's it becomes Satan. a crutch, that's when it's idolatry. Well, so now what you're talking about <laughs> is the difference between alcohol abuse and alcohol use. And my question is: is can you do drug use without doing drug abuse? You seem to have an are inconsistency pain, here. You, okay, are you in pain? Do you what 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 drug are we talking about? Do you, you need to do you, do you do you need to be in? I pain? don't drink do you, alcohol because my teeth hurt. I drink alcohol because I want to, uh, you know, relax a little bit. So if the drug <laughs> helps me to relax a little bit, then the drug's doing what I want it to do. That's called idolatry if you're if you're intoxicated. So any uh, alcohol it? use, you need idolatry. to be consistent. Idolatry. Sorry, I got, Johnny Ray, try that again. Uh, idolatry, Pete, is worshiping idols. And that's when you're addicted. Addiction is when you're controlled by it and when you worship it. That. Okay, if, if you're if you want to have a cocktail when you come home to relax, there's nothing wrong with that. What if but I if want a half a joint? And you're drunk. Half a joint. That's it. Do you have cancer? If you have cancer, that's fine. If you don't, <laughs> why do is not, it? Wait. Why is it okay? I'm right. confused, Pete. Why is it okay in your mind to relax with a uh, a glass of wine, but it's not okay to relax with a half of a joint? Well, I mean, are you intoxicated? Are you going to Are you intoxicated when you're relaxed with your glass of wine isn't the purpose of no, drinking wine all. to intoxicate yourself? Pete likes wine. Not at all. There's a, there, you can be relaxed without being drunk. If you, oh, you know, well, well, I didn't say like, drunk. I didn't say drunk. I said relaxed. Well, that's, you that's, could be tipsy. Well, that's is what is the, being tipsy that's what d- the joint. No, 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 no. Hold on. Is being tipsy being the stone. same thing as being drunk in your mind? Yes, it is. It is. Okay, so what comes before yeah. drunk? What what level of uh, intoxication comes before drunk to you? Well, uh, 
I think if you're a little drunk, you're still drunk. So I, I don't hmm. know about all the science. I don't know about you, Pete, not. but I can't get through a glass of wine without being tipsy. I can't. What about you? Okay, then drink then drink half a glass. Okay. I see. Or don't see, drink at all. The, the only consistency I'm looking here for you here, Pete, is is that you're hating on the uh, pot smokers while you're loving on the uh, alcohol users. The fact mm. is that any no, consumption he claims he's never gone too too far with alcohol. Any consumption of alcohol is mind altering. Any consumption of marijuana is mind altering. The Bible God says bless it. fine things about alcohol. It says nothing about marijuana. I think it does say something about like planting things and using oh, God's oh, plants oh. or whatever. Yeah, it's pretty clear oh, about it. But, ref- but yeah, it does say you know it does refer to alcohol and it leads to debauchery and stuff. But that isn't you know that that can be transcribed on the using our when's, it can be transcribed on the hallucinogens Pete, when's the Any last time you had a little bit too much alcohol uh not for a while actually what's a, a very, while very long time. uh years years okay all right and when's yeah. the last time you drank alcohol any amount any amount of it no wonder you're so angry i have some wine you know i have, have a joint wait wait night. you're having wine right now no, I had some the other day. The other I day. I didn't get drunk, and I didn't get tipsy. Not tipsy. You can, you can enjoy a beverage, you know, and relax without mm-hmm. being intoxicated. So don't give me that junk that, oh, you have, if you drink a wine, then you're get, it's like you're doing cocaine or, or pot or whatever. If you're using it for any reason but medical problems, you're in pain, then it is Where idolatry did the, and it's wrong. Wait a minute. Where? I'm just curious to know more about your beliefs on... Uh, I, I realize we started talking about gay people, and now we're off on uh, substance abuse and substance use. There, but there I'm curious of, as to how this... One beca- of many problems. Wait, wait. Just slow down, Pete. Where did the uh, this arbitrary line get drawn for you? Was it Pete who decided this, or was it like your pastor who decided that you can't have more alcohol than to, you know, get to the point of being feel being able to feel the alcohol basically? Like you can't notice its effects essentially? Is that kind of your rule? Is that your line in the sand, so to speak? I don't play with it, but you know what I'll tell you. When you're drunk, you that's when it becomes idolatry. And you know if you're drunk. Don't give me that junk that Oh, oh, I'm just tipsy or I'm not. Oh, you I know, know when I'm drunk. I just don't believe it's idolatry. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, like I know what idolatry is. Idolatry is putting your hand over your heart and saying a prayer to a piece of fabric. Well, I, I mean, I know what idolatry from. is. No, He's no. saying it owns you. He's no. saying you worship it. That, it's, uh... it. No, it's not. I mean, like the Bible's very clear. Baal was this gold calf. God yeah. killed some, uh, you know, like if the Bible wants me to know what idolatry is, it needs to be very idolatry. clear that drug consumption's idolatry, and it's not. This is just made up crap uh, by modern Christians. Hey, Pete, thanks for the call, man. I do appreciate the conversation tonight. Uh, I like gay people; they've always been nice to me. Idolatry and... is finding a little wooden or metal thing and calling it God and worshiping it. And I, and I like to get a little bit tipsy. I don't like to get drunk. I think there's a difference between the two. I don't like to be puking or having a. I haven't bad smoked time. marijuana in a long, long time. There's more coming up here in moments, and I don't think there's anything wrong with altering your state of consciousness. What do you think? This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. 
or the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us, and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control toll free. The number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features there. They are free. freetalklive.com. At coffee.freetalklive.com, there's another feature. It's a free pound of coffee. That's a heck of a feature. All you have to do is go there, sign up for the subscription. It is a subscription, but you can cancel at any time. You can get your free pound of coffee and, you know, dip up out of there. Whatever you want to do, it's fine. But it's delicious coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. I think once you try BuzzBox coffee, you'll really love it. And when you you sort of get the experience of helping other people, because for every 10 people that sign up through BuzzBox, we're able to help another family around the world get a microloan. And with that microloan, they'll be able to get whatever there is they're looking for, restaurant equipment, maybe a plow, maybe a sewing machine, you know, bicycle, uh, delivery vehicle, whatever. I don't know, but they do. And they need that hand up much more than they need a hand out. And that's why we're doing this with BuzzBox. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so let's continue here. It appears to be the night of the homophobes. Tom is on the line in Nashville. Toss. You're on Free Talk Live, Tom. Uh, yeah, good evening. I uh, want to talk to you about United States citizenship. And I tell you, if you want to live and work in the United States of America, it really helps if you have United States citizenship. Sure does. However, if you prefer to live and work somewhere else, then it's kind of like a cancer. You see, uh, my aunt... Uh, she was told that her cancer was cured, and then a few years later it came back, mm. and eventually uh, that was uh, it met her demise because uh, she thought it was cured. And this is happening to people. First of all, what the, the problem is that uh, 
not so much that you have to pay U.S. taxes, but you also uh, have to find an accountant who's capable of uh, doing all the math and knowing all the ins and outs of filing a U.S. tax return Mm -hmm. so that you can find out that you don't have to pay anything because you paid so much local taxes anyway. And you, you have to uh, you find out that you were supposed to be reporting your bank accounts to the U.S. Treasury all of these years, and uh, you haven't been doing it, so there's humongous fines and prison time for that. So people decide they're not going to take any chances. They're just going to stay away from the United States because they don't want to go to prison for failing to report a bank account, even though there was no tax mm-hmm. to pay on the money. And uh, what uh, that's what the problem with it. Now, some people thought they were cured of U.S. citizenship when they became citizens of another country because they swore off their allegiance and the bureaucrats told them, and U.S. statutes said the same thing. If you become a citizen of another country, that you would lose your U.S. citizenship. And then the U.S. uh, Supreme Court uh, modified that because the 14th Amendment spells out, you know, the citizenship clause. And so, in all fairness to the U.S. Supreme Court, it's the Constitution and the overreach of imposing these requirements on uh, expatriates that's really the problem. Because, yeah, the, the Constitution does say that these people are still citizens, even if they took that oath, unless they did it with the intention of losing their citizenship. And how are you supposed to find out what their intentions are? So, okay. going on, going on uh, to explain some examples, okay, uh, a member of the House of Commons, uh, Elizabeth May, who was very much against the uh, Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, she was born in Connecticut, and she became a Canadian citizen, and she went on to become the leader of the Green Party of Canada. Hmm. But she's uh, in a situation where uh, she might wind up having her bank accounts reported to the United States because she was born in the United States, even though under Canadian law she's only a Canadian citizen. It's crazy. Uh, another example. Another Remember the example. FACTA thing is uh, is that the bank regulations you're discussing that is what forces supposedly banks around the world to snitch on and report on American people uh, who have jobs and who have bank accounts, and that makes or, it or so be, yeah. makes it so the IRS can come after them, or they get locked out of the U.S. Markets and the U.S. Uh, clearinghouses, and they can't do international transaction, clear international transactions as easily. So they're yeah, just going to wind up difficult. bypassing that. And Thanks, find, Tom, find for the call tonight. Thing. I appreciate hearing from you. Now, one way to get around that, of course, is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an international decentralized currency that nobody can control whether you have a Bitcoin account. You can go and create a Bitcoin account without anyone ever knowing you've created the Bitcoin account. Unlike banks, where you got to go in and show them all kinds of identification and bend over and you know, they're going to put the rubber glove on with the Patriot Act. They're going to get you good. Uh, with Bitcoin, you just go and create a wallet and you can create the wallet through services like blockchain.info or blockchain.com. Same company, just two different sites. Or you can go through the actual official client for the program. And when you install that official client, nobody knows you've installed it. Nobody knows you've generated your own wallet unless you tell someone, then no one has any clue. And so Bitcoin, while it's a a system that allows for transparency, meaning that every transaction ever that has ever occurred with Bitcoin is public, you can go and look at any transaction that ever happened. And uh, but it can also be used anonymously. So even though it right. is public, it can so, be used anonymously. You know, if it says um, bank account number five four nine two seven four, you know, in, in, you know yeah. bunch of numbers and Who letters and that? stuff, made this transaction to this, uh, you know, this bank account. Mm-hmm. That information, without being sort of linked to names and and addresses, isn't terribly useful. That's correct. Yeah, a Bitcoin wallet. I- I, I would say has the potential to be like the ultimate numbered bank account, more more so than any 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 other version of a numbered bank account right. that has existed up to now. Yeah, and now, did, was Tom talking about the Swiss banks or was it well worldwide banks? Okay. Are, uh, there's this FACTA thing that he mentioned. I think is what the FATCA. Yeah, it's, oh, it's FATCA. Yeah, so that's where the foreign banks, Swiss banks, etc., are being told by the feds that they need to to hop to and do what they're told. Right. And they're doing it. And give up info on their clients to the U.S. government. I heard, and uh, don't remember who said it, but 
I heard that the U.S. was the only nation in the world that had the temerity to tax their citizens who were not earning income inside the U.S. I have heard I've heard North Korea added to that list, but I can't imagine that that is entirely true. I mean, you know, how many? I, I don't I don't even know how their tax system works. So yes, there are very few countries that tax a person, whether citizen or not, that is not in their geo geographic area. You know, when they have these VAT taxes, I've got to say that I think a VAT tax is better than what we've got here in this what? country as far as an income tax goes. Why? I think it's fairer, I okay. suppose. Uh, if you consider the concept of government to be know. fair, then a VAT is fairer than the income tax. The income tax can be dodged with yeah. relative ease. You can't dodge the VAT. And frankly, with relative impunity, tens of millions of people in the United States adults between the ages of 18 and and 64 just don't pay but you can't dodge the vat tax because it's no, you can't dodge every that. uh movement along the manufacturing process essentially any time a product is sold from one company to another as i understand it the vat tax is That's, added uh, I, I thought it was just at retail it probably uh-uh. depends on new no, vat is is at every level otherwise it would just be a sales tax yeah uh, Wouldn't be just a value-added tax, right? Come back with more here in moments. And to who? To whom is the value being added? And what value? It's a crazy name for a tax. Eight fifty-five, four fifty, free. You take control. Free talk live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. Dr. Wallach, an award-winning scientist, naturopathic physician, author of several books such as Dead Doctors Don't Lie, Let's Play Doctor, and a Nobel Prize nominee. Dr. Wallach will be here on September 15th and 16th. Wallach has proven that diseases classified as autoimmune were in fact caused by nutritional deficiencies. Get your free ticket to hear about the true causes of diseases. Call 763-291-5052. To receive your free ticket, call 763-291-5052. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, 
The best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. <laughs> Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features you'll find there. Those other talk show hosts charge you for their sites, and ours is free. So again, go to freetalklive.com, as we will be going to your phone calls and thoughts about whatever's on your mind. But also, want you to know, we were talking about Bitcoin a moment ago. If you've been looking for a good opportunity to meet some of the movers and the shakers in the Bitcoin universe, you can do that in Orlando. Yeah, it's a Bitcoin party, and I'll, I'm, I'll bet there's going to be some, uh, you know, alliances struck, deals made at this event. It's called Coins in the Kingdom, and it's at Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. Don't let the price put you off. It's really inexpensive. Tickets are 60 dollars for the two-day event now that doesn't include tickets to walt disney world which they'll be going on on the third day you'll have to get that and hotels are a hundred dollars a night and that's pretty reasonable kids under 12 can uh, attend the event for free funds mandatory come celebrate magic internet money at the magic kingdom there'll be lots of people at the event folks from skyhook who created bitcoin atm mm -hmm. liberty.me uh Bitcoin pioneer Charlie Shrim recently having uh, put his legal troubles behind him with uh, with Bitcoin. MIT Bitcoin Project will be there. Cryptocurrency College Network, the Ch Chamber of Digital Commerce, Bitcoin Not Bombs, Mycelium. It'll be a great event. Coinsinthekingdom.com. It's coinsinthekingdom.com. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. John, listening to WNMT in northern Minnesota. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, John. Yeah, uh, I got a little saying to say here. Uh, there's so much good in the worst of us, so much bad in the best of us, that it hardly behooves any of us to judge the rest of us. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Yes, I'm with you there, John. I hope I got it right. I like I, it, it, sound, it sounded right to me. Anything else you want to share tonight? That, that's it. Thanks right. for the call. I appreciate it. And by the way, I didn't correct this earlier. Uh, I had said that the phone lines were down and then proceeded to give out the phone lines again over and over again. Actually, they're back. Uh, so they've been back for about an hour now. So uh, our regular lines are available at 855-450-FREE. That's toll-free, brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. You can still call on that other number I gave you earlier. That's always good. So we're here for you. We'll take your calls about anything. Let's go to Ike. He's in Kentucky. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Ike. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's on your mind, Ike? Go ahead. I wanted to talk about um, a scam that the state's trying to uh, perpetuate against me. Okay, sure. I just got this letter in my – it's like a little card. looks really official from the state here. It says, uh, as requested by you and your plumbing contractor, uh, we have attempted to make an inspection of your water heater because I got a, a new water heater mm -hmm. installed by professionals in my house. Uh, the, the best company here locally installed it. So They're you excellent. you told the government you wanted them to come inspect your water heater? That doesn't sound believable. That, I never did. I never did. Uh -huh. And then I'll just read one more sentence here. It says, this inspection is necessary for the protection of your health and safety. <laughs> That's not – that now necessary is different from mandatory, right? Yeah, but you get a fine if you don't get it. Oh, so then, then that's both mandatory. necessary and that's mandatory. mandatory. <laughs> so wait, did the did the uh, plumbing company snitch you out? Was that what happened? Had to have been. Well, I don't understand why it's necessary for the government to send someone to inspect it. I mean, the plumbers are excellent. I have the best right. company in 
in town install my pl uh, water heater. That's really the problem. The best company in town is the most successful company in town. The most successful company in town didn't get that way by not uh, following the government's rules. Mm. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use them. I'm just saying that's kind of one of the problems right, with doing this, it. Wait oh, my plumbing's done by some guy who doesn't have any certification. Yeah, it's true. Now, wait, isn't this interesting, though, right? Like, the government would have you believe that you know they're needed for licensing we have to license these plumbers these plumbers who come in your house and they could uh, make the sewage pipe your water pipe these guys need to be licensed we have to know that they know their stuff but yet here they are i bet you this is a licensed plumber because where in america do you have unlicensed plumbers that are you know the majority of them so i'm betting the, this is a licensed plumber but here's the state undermining their own license the state is saying, well, we do have this license process, and this plumber is licensed, so that's supposed to mean they're competent, but we're going to go ahead and bring one of our inspectors in here because we need to charge extra fees and bring some more revenue in. Uh, but ultimately, by doing that, they're undercutting the legitimacy of the licensing process, aren't they? I mean, aren't they essentially saying that our license is meaningless because we need to have someone come and check on all their work? And I have to pay. I have to pay thirty-five dollars for the guy to come in and check my house. So, I think it's uh, pretty much just a, a made-up position. State plumbing inspector for the health mm. department probably just made it up so some, you know, some guy's cousin could get a job or something. I'm with you. Thanks, Ike, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Sorry to hear about that. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. These are the inefficiencies that are built into the uh, the marketplace. I mean... Well, but the government wants you to believe that this is necessary for efficiency. If they didn't, if they didn't have their inspector there, these licensed plumbers could be going all willy-nilly and doing who knows what. Well, the, the, that's the chance I, as a consumer, should be able to take if that's what I wish to do. And I do. Um, I think that I... Look, my water heater, if there's a problem with it, it's going to affect me and my family, and that's it. It's not going to affect anyone else. I can totally understand why a condominium might want, uh, you know, to, to you to use a particular plumber mm -hmm. that's licensed through, that's certified by them, that then um, has an inspector come through and look at that work afterwards. I can get it. That would because, probably be the condo that has the inspector come by. Yeah, the, the, it would be the condominiums inspector, yeah. or it would be that company's second guy who comes through, or whatever right. the deal is. It's a good idea to have work checked. I'm not claiming that it's not. It's a great sure. idea. But it depends on what the consequences of it are. Um, if you're installing a hot water heater out in the barn so that you can have some warm water when you wash your hands after milking the cow, you probably don't need the help. Um, if you're installing a hot water heater in a condominium that's 27 stories tall and you're on the 27th story and if your hot water heater goes it could put three people out of their houses for the next three weeks or whatever mm -hmm. well that's an entirely different story and by the way washing machines and these things happen in condos they happen share your thoughts toll free number 855 450 free johnny ray uh, you ever had a government agent come inspect your work you do janitor stuff for a living Yes. No. No, I never have. I've heard a lot of horror stories about how if your spray bottles aren't properly labeled with, you know, what's in them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, regardless of what it is, even if it's water, you need to have a label on there that says water. I've heard stories that OSHA or I'm not sure who else uh, will come in and, and give you multi-thousand dollar, find your Oof. company for that sort of thing. But I've never seen it. That's good. Yeah. Good they're leaving the janitors alone. Yeah. But um, speaking of the water heaters, I think we do need uh, some common sense regulations because I want my water to be hot. And if I didn't have the government to, you know, rein me in, I would get my water so hot that the water catches fire and <laughs> my house burns down. And then my neighbor's house burns down thanks to the free market. Great job, guys. Right on. Let's go to Greg in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Greg. Hey, how are you guys? What's on your mind tonight, Greg? Um, I just uh, I called in the other day. I kind of enjoy calling you guys and discussing my views. I just uh, wanted to clarify. I love to call in because I – not because I think I'm right. I just want to kind of battle test my views. And uh, it took, took me years to get to the point where I'm pretty confident in them. But I'm always open to sort of, uh, uh, you know, being set straight. Yeah, I'm, I'm always thankful when you call in. I think you're a great caller, Greg. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. And I enjoy calling in. Okay. I wanted to, so I kind of wanted to talk 
distinction between huh? minarchism and anarchism. Um, I consider myself basically as a minarchist, not because it was an arbitrary choice, but just because I see the value in some government, uh, uh, you know, management team sort of things. And I was always wondering what is in, what is common to all those things that uh, I think are important. And uh, what's common is basically, I found, it's things that the vast majority of the population. And uh, so that's where I was basically calling. Minarchism about. versus anarchism. We can find out more about it here in moments. You can take control. It's Free Talk Live. At the Home Depot, buy one or more pallets of GAF Royal Sovereign three-tab shingles and save up to 20%. Let's raise the roof, but lower the cost with bulk pricing on GAF, America's number one shingle, featuring advanced protection technology. This is worth shouting from the rooftops. Let's do this. Up to 20% off one or more pallets of select GAF shingles. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Valid through September 17th, U.S. only. See store for details. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph 2, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph 3, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph 4, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. The 
This is Free Talk Live. Take control. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you. And if you like the show and you want to help support the sh- uh, the program here, you can shop with us. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. Shop.freetalklive.com allows you to access links to Amazon and some other stores online. When you do your shopping at those links, Free Talk Live will benefit. So go to shop.freetalklive.com. It just takes a moment for you, but it makes a big difference for us. Shop.freetalklive.com. Greg. He's back with us in New York. Greg, uh, you were saying uh, something about the difference between minarchism and anarchism. Minarchism being uh, the idea that some small level of government is acceptable and desirable. And anarchism, of course, rejects the idea of governance whatsoever. In fact, some might argue that it rejects the idea of self-governance, which uh, is one of the reasons why I'm not an anarchist. But I'm also not a minarchist either. I like the term voluntarist for myself. Most, mostly if you go and read about anarchist uh, you know, thinking, start on the Wikipedia page, you're going to find essentially people who want uh, sort of self, uh, self-grouping socialists. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's probably true for a lot of anarchists. There's also the people that call themselves anarcho-capitalists, so not all anarchists are made equal. Regardless, what was the point you were trying to make, Greg? Yeah, so uh, basically as a self-described minarchist, I guess I would be uh, called a statist. But I think I'm still more liberty-oriented uh, than the average statist, basically. So I'm not sitting around you know, saying, hey, look at this free society that I already live in. Let me, I know how to make it better. Let me control some people, and that way I can make a better outcome. I am saying I recognize that people do form organizations. There's no way around it. People are going to organize, and once they form organizations, they're going to have to find a way to manage those organizations, like the condo you were just talking about. That condo may have a policy that you disagree with. It could be no pets. It could be check the boilers. And the thing is that you have reasons to be in that condo that may outweigh your uh, disagreement. And yep. at the end of the day, you know, you, you can move to another condo or you may choose to stay and put up with the policy. So I view other larger organizations the same way. I'm not saying they don't perpetrate violence. What I am saying is it's going to happen any way that organizations will form and any way people are not going to agree with every decision of the management team. What I want to care about is how can we set up these organizations, their constitutions, and the way they're run in the first place so that we can prevent the most egregious uh, things that we have found to date. And I think that is an is a important focus. I don't believe you can. Uh, I don't think you can that. write any words down paper that are going to prevent uh, the governments from growing and becoming more oppressive over time. There's no evidence that any of the words so far have worked. I don't see why any new combination of them would all of a sudden create the magic spell that would restrict the government. I mean, the United States is probably the, uh, I mean, if you look at at governments in the world and sort of how you would structure them and what you would hope that they would uh, accomplish within the confines of an organization that claims a monopoly privilege on a given piece of land, the United States has to be the pinnacle of that. And the uh, I mean, United States is, is essentially trying to rule the world. Um, you know, the State Department either hands out, basically has a carrot or a stick for your foreign country, whoever it might be, and you'll follow their rules, or you'll get the carrot, or the, and you won't get the carrot, or you and you will get the stick. No, absolutely. I think uh, many governments today are are engaging in all kinds. Of, look at Russia. Look at uh, you know uh, the United States, and all these governments act in imperial ways. Uh, they they disrupt uh, the sovereignty of other countries. I agree with all that. I'm just saying that I think there are tools that people have used. I mean, the United States. Uh, tried some really innovative tools at the time, which was checks and balances and a uh, bill of rights. And the Constitution limited the government's power. Now, it took 300 years for the thing to start, you know, shaking apart. But Arguably not. That- some would say it, are, it shook apart right out the gate. Alien Sedition Possibly. Act. I mean, Lysander Spooner might say that. Well, Man, it, the right. Alien and Sedition Act uh, under uh, Adams, the second president, was some pretty tyrannical um, uh, legislation. Uh, J- Jefferson he, he himself admitted to unconstitutionally employing the incipient Navy against the uh, Tripoli pirates. Um, and and furthermore, the the, the 
According to the Constitution, the way the federal government was to raise money was with import duties and excise taxes, and there's nothing virtuous about that. That's just that's just scapegoating in in a in a manner of speaking. All right. So, Greg, what do you think? I mean, you you were talking about you've been thinking about ways to tie down the government with the chains of some sort of constitution. What would you like to see change? What would what wording or what? Well, difference? I mean. My, the, I, obviously, my thinking is simplistic compared to the complexity of uh, reality, but, um, you know, the, the common criticism of minarchists is like, okay, well, what would you think the minimum is? You know, what, what would you say the government uh, should do? And in my opinion, uh, the minimum changes, uh, it, it, it depends on the minimum expectations of society. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that the other like, night. I don't want to yeah. really rehash the same topic over and over again. That wasn't what yeah. I was asking. I was asking you, you said you wanted to create a, a government that uh, is restricted in what it can do. I was asking you, what by what mechanism do you plan on restricting the government to itself? Well, typically a government has a constitution and then it uh, has checks and balances to make sure that it sticks to that constitution. Um, and that's that didn't work out. That didn't work out. So how are you going to make that work? Well, when you say it doesn't work out, are you looking for a magic pill to suddenly make everything nonviolent? I mean, you can't remove the no, violence. that's not what I said. I was just saying that I didn't say that. The, I got a couple of shots. Here, let's try this one. Um, if a law is good enough for the federal government, it should be good good enough for 100 percent of the representatives. I think uh, we can get 100 percent of 435 politicians to agree that, you know, murder, rape, arson these things are bad so if you can get uh if you can run your elections democratically the representatives get 51 percent 50 percent plus one and uh, they get in then they have to agree unanimously to pass a law barring that one sure. that's, what's sure. that so that would be a constitution that would be one of the ways that you could run an uh, organization if that works better if it leads to better outcomes then we should try it in other organizations too well, the problem with uh, people that claim monopolies is is they really don't like you trying new things. I mean, that's sort of what a monopoly is about, is, right. is protecting power. I and mean, that's why this and, isn't going to happen. But I was just asking you to speculate, Greg, on if you had any ideas. It, it doesn't sound like you really have anything specific. No, I, I mean, I, I have tons of examples where it's already been done. It's uh, obviously been done in a messy way, but it's been done. For example, you were talking the other day about how come people have access to water. What about food? Of course, food. People have food stamps. The food stamp system has lifted millions out of poverty, and it acts as a safety net. Eighty percent of America is close to the poverty line right now. It's it's terrible. And um, th there's just an article that came out online. And so you're going to hear a lot well, about You're looking at the seen and the forward. unseen, uh, Greg. I mean, okay, sure, you can point to people who got a food stamp check or whatever, the card or whatever they put it on, and that they got food. And you can point to that. You can see that. But what you can't see is what would have happened to help people in need in the absence of the food stamp program. Obviously, people will come to the aid of folks who are in need. That's it's, At least it seems obvious to me. I guess there are some people out there who believe that people need to be coerced into helping their fellow man. But well, to hold me, on. Hold on. We, sorry. We can actually look, go on Wikipedia and look at, for example – effect of welfare on poverty. You can see actually studies done. It had a tremendous effect on poverty in many countries across the world. So these programs do have better outcomes sometimes. How do you explain that? You oh, I, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think that, uh, that you can see that there would be benefits, but the question is, is um, you know, in the absence of that, the marketplace tends to run a little more slowly. But what you don't have is you don't have the resentment. There's the people that are, you know, not using the safety net. They're using the hammock. Um, they're laying there and not doing anything. And there's a lot of people that are resentful. I just saw yesterday, um, Republican, thank me because I'm working hard so the rest of you don't have to. You know, some guy was so upset about the social welfare programs in this country, he, he decided to put a bumper sticker on his car to talk about this. And you know, he's right. Absolutely, there's a level of fraud. We know that the insurance companies out there will claim that 25% of insurance claims are fraudulent. That means uh, you would assume in the with a much less efficient organization like the state, I don't know, 33%? 50% of uh, people on welfare are fraudulent? I don't know. But once again, you're arguing from the point, Greg, of you believe that this is practical. You believe that uh, the, that you've pointed out here. Welfare programs, in your mind, have helped people, and so therefore it's all worthwhile. All the violence... Well, there's diminishing returns, of course. 
all the violence that backs these programs is worthwhile, whereas my position is, let's help people without the violence. Can't we do that? I mean, isn't it a good idea to help people, and can't we just persuade people to help other people without having to threaten them with violence? For instance, there's uh, a homeless shelter that's privately run here in Keene, New Hampshire, and there are some homeless shelters that are run with government money. And the one that is privately run runs better, in my opinion. A I lot w- better. I would rather support <laughs> that uh, that privately run shelter. And thank you for the call. I'd rather support that privately run shelter than give money to the government shelters. But the government forces people to give money to the government shelters. So they're not even competing on an even playing field. I just want to be free to make a choice. Why shouldn't I have that freedom? It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Hour 3 next. Oh, fall. A time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvalueinn.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,266, silver opened at $19.16, and Bitcoin is trading around $467.50. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillforTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, Bitcoin access will soon be available to PayPal merchants. This comes as PayPal, owned by eBay, announced their new OneTouch Wallet, a Bitcoin-integrated cell phone application. Just after the official announcement at the TechCrunch Disrupt SF conference by Bill Reddy of eBay's Braintree, PayPal posted a Twitter announcement with a link to a PayPal YouTube video discussing the new Bitcoin-integrated OneTouch Wallet. The messaging includes the term people money and describes Bitcoin as unbound by banker bill. The video opened with the sentiment that by working for ourselves and empowering each other, we can change the world. The video is titled PayPal Voices. We are the people who have built a whole new place to live, dream, or be. We employ ourselves and vote with our money. Our phone is our wallet. We can spend Bitcoin with a tap. Without a pocket. PayPal is one of many large companies to jump on board with Bitcoin this year. They include Overstock, Expedia, Dell, and Dish Network. They're among the nation's leading Bitcoin giants. And the question must be asked, who will be next? Newly released internal IRS emails provide more details on how IRS official Lois Lerner 
dealt with the scandal surrounding delayed tax exemptions for conservative groups. The 1,760 emails show Lerner attempting to avoid an investigation by Treasury Department auditors. Despite public apologies, Lerner emailed her co-workers to let them know they were being beaten up by the press for all the wrong reasons. Lerner had been held in contempt of Congress for refusing to testify about her role in the discriminatory practices that targeted conservative groups, including branches of the Tea Party. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And today's edition of the Liberty Beat brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM located in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com, the Liberty Beat. This past week, notorious liberty activists Michael Cargill and Adam Kokesh found themselves in the national news yet again. Owner of Central Texas Gunworks and Liberty Beat sponsor Cargill was featured on USA Today about merchants accepting Bitcoin. At his Austin business, you can purchase a firearm with Bitcoin or check out their on-site Bitcoin ATM. Kokesh, host of Adam vs. the Man, was featured in the Washington Post and other news outlets after he was given a suspended sentence, plus time served, for his 2013 gun charges in Washington, D.C. Last summer, in an act of civil disobedience, Kokesh videotaped himself cocking what appears to be a loaded shotgun in Washington, D.C. Police raided his home and put him in a cage for over three months. He was released from jail last fall when he pled guilty to unlawful gun and ammunition charges. He has since finished his first book, Freedom, available on Amazon.com. The Department of Justice has released new information detailing the process they claim led to the arrest of Ross Ulbricht, the alleged identity behind Dread Pirate Roberts, founder of the Silk Road Marketplace. Ulbricht was arrested in October of 2013 at the San Francisco Public Library for allegations of drug trafficking, computer hacking, money laundering, and engaging in a criminal enterprise. The DOJ stated they did not violate Ulbricht's Fourth Amendment rights when they gained access to the Silk Road servers because they claimed they tracked the servers through a leak on the website. The DOJ statement said the leak was due to an apparent misconfiguration of the user login interface by the site administrator. The apparent leak led the authorities to the server through the IP address. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Now accepting Bitcoin online, rrbi.co, or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Terror and confusion fell upon the nation this week after nearly 314 million Americans reported inexplicably losing consciousness for eight hours straight last night, with countless victims helplessly recovering from the fugue-like state with no memory whatsoever of the lost time. Researchers at Princeton University who have been studying the alarming phenomenon since its inception told reporters that though they were unable to ascertain the source of the sweeping condition, it appeared to be somehow linked to the setting of the sun. Right now, we suspect that there may be some connection between these sudden blackouts and the visions that some Americans have reported experiencing while they were unconscious. But most of these hallucinations are too abstract for us to draw any definite conclusions from. At this time, we urge people to never turn off their lights and under no circumstances close their eyes for any extended period of... Oh, God. Oh, it's happening again. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever's on your mind right here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Uh, please enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. They're totally free. Once again, freetalklive.com. Ian, Johnny Ray, and Mark here in the studio. We'll take your calls about absolutely anything. We also have Skype. The Skype username that you need to connect to is lrn.fm. Johnny Ray wants to update us on a story, a case that we probably haven't talked about in years. I, I mean, I barely even remember who this guy is. Jose Padilla is his name, or Padilla, depending on where you're from. Yeah, I said Padilla first, but... Uh, For a Mark, long time. Mark corrected me. Corrected me. 
So the the, the, the family. Well, yeah, the the right name way to say the name is Padilla. Padilla. There's no doubt about that's it. the Hispanic but version of the name. For whatever reason, um, you know this this family pronounces the name Padilla, and like Amarillo. Well, it's their name. They get to pronounce it how they want, right? Amarillo. So, I, I got it. <laughs> Jose Padilla. What is happening with this guy? And who was he? Who was who? Who is Jose Padilla? Wasn't he accused he was of some terrorism? Yeah. Uh, and the, then held in like horrifyingly inhumane conditions in some federal prison yeah, three and awaiting a trial for three and a half years. This uh, I, this is the Sun Sentinel, which I I guess is Florida. Florida, yep. Jose Padilla sentenced to twenty one years in terrorism case. Mm. Paula McMahon, Sun Sentinel. Jose Padilla, the Broward County man convicted of terrorism, conspiracy, and support charges, was resentenced Tuesday, today, to 21 years in prison, nearly four more years than his original punishment. Hmm. Prosecutors had recommended a prison term of 30 years, but already conceded in court filings that a sentence of four months less was legally permissible. Padilla nodded and gave a brief smile to his family as he was led into the federal courtroom in Miami. He kept his head bowed for most of the sentencing and barely interacted with anyone, including his lawyer, federal public defender Michael Caruso. Dressed in beige jail scrubs, Padilla wore shackles and was handcuffed to a chain around his waist. When the judge asked if he wanted to speak on his behalf, Padilla responded in a low voice, No, Your Honor. But his mother, Estella LeBron of Plantation, condemned the government's treatment of her son, who his lawyer said was abused while imprisoned awaiting trial. I think it's pretty inarguable. He was, he was. They, they had him like uh, his hands and like mittens. Uh, they had uh, like blinders on yes. him so he couldn't see where he was going. There's a uh, photo. Deprived of, him of sleep. Yeah, there's a, there's a photo of him being taken to a a dental visit, I think, and he's got earphones on and goggles so that he can't see because he's he's specifically being subjected to sensory deprivation. Um, bizarre. Now that can be fun, by the way. Sensory deprivation. They actually have tanks uh, for that, like sensory deprivation tanks. Yeah, you can pay for called. that, but uh, uh, so in this case, he wasn't. It. No, they, it, it's probably not fun when they're forcing it on you in the way they were. But sensory deprivation isn't always a bad thing, I guess is what I'm saying. Jose has been tortured in his own land, LeBron told the judge. His mind is not there. I don't care what anyone says. Jose's mind is gone. Wow. LeBron reminded the judge that Padilla was born and raised in the U.S. The way they treated him, you don't even treat an animal like that. Mm. In the United States of America, we have a constitution and we have to follow the laws. Apparently not. One of Padilla's young... Oh, oh, no, no. All they have to do to get around this whole laws, constitution thing is just call someone an enemy combatant. And then you can write all kinds of things that, uh, that can happen to that individual that are extra legal. Right, and that's exactly what they did to Padilla. Mm -hmm. One of Padilla's younger brothers, Tomas Texidor of Tamarack, sobbed and paused frequently to compose himself as he talked about how the brother, who was his father figure and role model has been destroyed by torture and isolation mm -hmm. over the last 12 years. Texador said it's as if his brother has passed away. When family visited him at the Federal Detention Center in Miami, Texador said Padilla only expressed concern for them, not himself. He would just tell me, why are you here? You don't need to do this to yourself. I'm okay. So now he's at a Supermax facility, and he's kept in a cell, which is, a, which is about the size of a small bathroom, I think he gets five hours of sunshine a month or something, but he's basically 24 hours kept inside this small bathroom. Mm. I'm, I'm assuming it's windowless. And it sounds horrifying to me. Jose Padilla was, he grew up in the U.S. It, in his youth, he, he became a member of the Latin Kings in Chicago. And he kicked a gang, another gang member in the head who died from being kicked in the head. So. Mm -hmm. So on account of that, he, he, he's often referred to as a murderer. And that's one of the reasons why, even though there was no real evidence to show that he had um, – he was contemplating any kind of terroristic acts, the fact that he had been convicted and jailed for manslaughter – Certainly didn't look good. That's why they want to give him 30 years mm. – uh, because he's because of his heightened level, and this is a quote from I don't know the judge or, or who, but a quote from the proceedings from I think one of his earlier uh, court appearances. 
was that his first sentence didn't uh, didn't take into account his heightened level of dangerousness. Um, I'm sorry that phrase that phrase really jumped. Um, I'm, what's what's the phrase? It, it jumped out at me because it was just such. It sounded fine to me. What you're saying is that uh, they brought his sentence up. He now is sentenced more because they're claiming he's he's more dangerous than they thought he was. He, his brother's saying his mind has been ruined by being uh, tortured. Are they really saying this guy's a, a real threat well, at this not, point? They're not resentencing him for how uh, his his uh, prison experience has been since his conviction. They're resentencing him because for whatever reason they feel that he wasn't sentenced enough at his conviction. Um, and <laughs> unless he has done something more, he wouldn't. Uh, he, he wouldn't be. It wouldn't have anything to do with his behavior in prison. This is only up to that point. A fe- uh, from NPR, a federal court in Miami has added four years to a sentence handed down in 2007 on Jose Padilla, who was convicted on charges of conspiracy and supporting Al Qaeda. Wow. Uh, that's uh, uh, Al Qaeda. The Associated Press says the new sentence was imposed by U.S. District Judge Marcia Cook, who originally gave Padilla more than 17 years in prison. She also previously gave Padilla, a U.S. citizen and Muslim convert, credit for the more than three years he was held without charge as an enemy combatant at a South Carolina Navy brig. And that's so he was supposedly given credit for time the first served. time around. And then she just went ahead and slapped another four years onto this guy? I'm a little confused. I think that she simply took away the credit she had given him for time served. And and that has turned 17 years into 21 years. Oh, really? Yeah, but the timeline is has confused me a little bit. Because hmm. shouldn't a judge not be able to go and increase a sentence? I mean, if a judge makes a decision that... You should get this sentence, son, or whatever. Shouldn't at that point, if anything changes, the sentence simply just be lowered? Like if uh, the judge missed some sort of important fact or something in considering the sentence, too bad. You made the decision. It's only supposed to be five years. And now you want to make it 15 or 10 or whatever. I don't know about whether I'd out. call that a hard and fast rule. But I would say um, in in this circumstance, not giving a man time served who's served time. I don't understand why they have an option. If a person served, the t- been in jail, been mm-hmm. incarcerated, then they should be credited for that time, shouldn't they? Oh, yeah, that doesn't. That incarceration doesn't count. We have new special incarceration for you. Well, a lot of times it does count. I've never seen it not count. Except for this sentence. time. Well, Johnny Ray didn't seem real clear on that. Like I said, I am a bit confused. According to the AP, the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in 2011 determined that Cook aired in giving Padilla credit for the Brig years, and also failed to properly account for his, quote, heightened risk of dangerousness. So a higher court came back on her, is what you're saying? Yes. Who who filed, who who created the, who... I don't know. Who appealed it? Must have been his attorneys. Yeah, and I I guess they weren't expecting what they got. (laughs) Appparently not. Uh, This is one of the problems with appeals. They can come back on you. Um, but Padilla was a a gang member in Chicago. Mm-hmm. He was in prison, maybe maybe for this manslaughter that he had committed, and he converted to Islam. He started going to this mosque. Then he spent some years in the Middle East, where all they can all they know that he did was that he got married and he did I think maybe some humanitarian things. He went from country to country, but there's no evidence to show that he. Was well, at a, a quote, train, terrorist training camp. We'll come back with more. You share your thoughts. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping 
Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. The idea that politicians are leaders. Check your premises on that one. Cutting proof. Really? (laughs) Would you really follow Barack Obama or George Bush? Would you really follow their every command? Would you follow their suggestions? Do you believe that politicians are somehow more knowledgeable than you are? That politicians are of a special group of people? They're a special little critter that uh, for some reason is uh, more enlightened or educated? Constantly you can here talking heads refer to the authorities or our leaders in Washington and it's just it's just patently absurd I mean these people are failures at life that's why they became politicians right uh, I mean you know there's so many of them are attorneys uh, <laughs> the good attorneys make, make a money. whole bunch of money and retire with yachts uh, the the unsuccessful ones go into politics free talk live seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.fm So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, here to take your calls. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's the ProXPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. You can join us there or on Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. If you want to get Bitcoins or several other cryptocurrencies, you can do it at expresscoin.com. Some of those cryptocurrencies are Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. You can do it if you live in Canada. They make it easy for you. All you have to do is go to a credit union that has shared branching in your town. You make a deposit, and within a business day, you'll have your cryptocurrency. So if you're looking to get in on the new cryptocurrency craze that I think uh, you know may very well replace fiat currencies as we understand them today or cause uh, the replacement of fiat currencies as we have them today, uh, you can go to ExpressCoin.com. Com. You can even do it, do it from a smartphone by downloading their app. It's expresscoin.com. Fast, easy, completely legal, great customer service, low fees. As a matter of fact, if you use coupon code FTL and get less than $40 worth of uh, Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency, there'll be no fee at all. So it's, it's expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL. 
Uh, speaking of uh, Bitcoin, we mentioned last night a story about PayPal possibly taking Bitcoin. I'd, I'd like to explore that because we didn't get a chance to. But Johnny Ray, you've been telling us about the resentencing or the adjusted sentence of one Jose Padilla. And there was something you reminded us about right before we were coming back from break that I thought was, was worth reminding our listeners about. Taking us back in time to when the, 2007. Jury, when the jury came back with a verdict about Jose Padilla. After many years of waiting to it for it to actually go to trial, it finally did. And then the, how was it that they delivered the verdict? or What was the circumstance there? The jury appeared, um, and they were all color-coordinated. The first row, everybody in the first row was wearing red. And everybody in the oh, second row, row was wearing white. And everyone in the third row was wearing blue. So these people were all very patriotic, and they were sending a message Ugh. to the world that 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 it, that they were gonna don't mess with America. Right. It, well, I mean, you can we'll see, convict you even though there's no evidence. Well, you have to sort of look at the zeitgeist of the time, right? Like, so you know, during the Red Scare, lots of people were caught up and saying called, the zeitgeist of the time is repetitive. Thanks. Um, and the zeitgeist, because zeitgeist means spirit of the times. Indeed. Looking at the spirit of the times, <laughs> one can see, you know, like during the Red Scare, yeah, people got caught up in this that had, you know, nothing to do. Some of them weren't even liberal uh, that were caught up in the Red, uh, you know, in, in these trials and the tribulations of the Red Scare. Obviously, in the Salem witch trials, there were lots of women who weren't witches that were convicted, tried, burned at the stake, these kinds of things. These things happen when societies are whipped up about something and it's difficult to know what happened with jose padilla whether or not he was in any way shape or form uh you know even unhappy with the united states's foreign policy we don't really know what he was going on with but mm -hmm. it, you would have been in a very difficult position trying to be the juror that says oh i, I have a reasonable doubt at this time juries tend to convict anyway, which I find very interesting that uh, far fewer than 1% of cases make it to trial, and then juries convict at about a, 30, at about a 66% uh, percentage rate, mm -hmm. which says to me that either, A, the criminal justice sy system is highly efficient, like um, makes a mistake f far fewer than 0.01% of the time, or we have a prison industrial complex that uh, just devours innocent people the Sounds evidence like the latter the evidence against padilla consisted of three items seven intercepted telephone conversations which the prosecutors were trying to say contained code words hmm. for jihad uh, but most but he what but he Meaning. was talking about he was talking about his marriage because mm. while he was in the Middle East he had married an Egyptian lady, and um, and talking about his troubles learning Arabic he was trying to learn Arabic. Mm. Um, it can't be easy, right? Uh, the the next piece of evidence was a ten year old video of Osama bin Laden, and an alleged and that's somehow evidence against him. I think it was simply used to to whip up. Uh, emotion against him. Yeah, okay. whip up the jury. And the third piece of evidence was a, an alleged application to a Mujahideen training camp with Padilla's fingerprints. Hmm. Well, that sounds like the most damning of them all, right? Yeah. I imagine a scenario where Padilla is shackled with, uh, is, is shackled, he's half out of his mind, and people are putting things into his hands. Sure. Mm. That's just what, what the scenario that suggests Certainly itself could to be. me. Why not? I guess that's a reasonable doubt, isn't it? Yeah. And anyway, that's, I think that's, that's all I've got to say about it, Ian. Um, I appreciate the update on that story. Yeah. I haven't heard about it in a long time. It, it, it's, it's strange it, as you can see, I still can't make heads or tails out of it. A, a, an appeal took his sentence from 17 years to Crazy. 21 years. I think they just want him to make sure that he that he breaking his mind isn't good enough for them, and they want to make sure that he dies in prison. How old was he when he went in? In his 30s? He's 43 now. 40s. He's okay, been there so for yeah, 12 years. Or, okay, 12 years. Jeez, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. 
Share your thoughts with us here toll free at 855-450 free. Should they put Jose Padilla in jail? Are you happy about this? Give him 20 more years while you're at it. Are you one of those people? You want to share your thoughts? We'd love to hear from you. 855-450 free. Uh, screw it that there, there's no evidence whatsoever. Get in the red, white, and blue get ups, folks, and let's put these people away. Just insane. I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's, that should have been in. It's been so right long. There. I barely remember anything about the case. But we've I, hit the high points here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've gone over all the basics. Well, I can tell you, fingerprints on a Mujahideen uh, training camp uh, application isn't. Uh, How does that work anyway? Can you leave fingerprints on a piece of paper? Sure can. I, guess I don't know. Absolutely. Enough about yeah, paper actually holds uh, fingerprints better than just really? about anything. Oh, that's amazing. The thing is, is you generally can't get. Uh, police to to take fingerprints. Um, like if you have something stolen and you want them to take oh, fingerprints, yeah. they just won't do it. <laughs> well, like, right. Like normally when I th- and I'm glad that you gave that information because you know in the movies they never take fingerprints off of pieces of paper. It's always a piece of glass or you know something shiny where there's a smooth surface where it'll yeah. be obvious that a print has been left. Now um, it's uh, from oil on your hands and paper holds the oil better than anything. I'll be damned. But you'd think that the uh, the paper would diffuse the oil somewhat. But I guess not, huh? It's still in the shape of the print. I, interesting. Yes, I and I do have a few, a uh, couple more notes to add. Padilla okay. was originally charged with a conspiracy to detonate a dirty bomb, a, a n- nuclear dirty bomb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, and those charges were dropped. There was there was nothing he never to had that. such a thing. Right, and then so what? What he ended up being charged with and getting twenty one years in a small windowless bathroom. Um, was for conspiracy uh, because they oh, conv- they convinced a jury that he was thinking about committing some kind of terrorist act. I think conspiracy charges are a terrible thing. It's punishing people for not doing anything, for planning to do something. What if they were to change their mind at the last moment? Shouldn't people have that freedom, the freedom to change their mind? First is the deed. And what second? First and only is the deed. (laughs) We'll come back with more. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with PillsGang.com? Join us September 13th to 12 noon Eastern for this live PillsGang.com free webinar valued at $75. You'll learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To register, simply go to LearnStocksForFree.com. LearnStocksForFree.com. Or call 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit, or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you are invited here to bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Latest on another company accepting Bitcoin out there, and this one is kind of big news. Kind of. We'll tell you more about that here in a moment, and your calls and thoughts welcome. Also, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show that one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall, so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. At modup.net, they provide only the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Visit modup.net, and when you're ready to order, if you pay with Bitcoin, you'll get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even better, whether you're paying with Bitcoin or not, use our code. It's FTL, like Free Talk Live, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, use code FTL at modup.net for world-class service at a great price for modafinil. Modup, M-O-D-U-P dot net. As we continue here, your calls. Let's go to Michelle on the road somewhere. You're on Free Talk Live, Michelle. Hi, Ian and Mark. How are you? Oh, it's Michelle Seven. Uh, hey, and Johnny Ray's with us here tonight. Oh, hey, Johnny. Hey, Michelle. What's a former co-host of Free Talk Live? So what's going on, Michelle? What's What's the latest? Well, I just got out of court, first time in New Jersey that I was in a um, court. I had to drive uh, about an hour and 45 minutes to get to where I was summoned uh, for a uh, speeding ticket. Okay. And um, then I had to wait two hours um, until I could then tell um, the prosecutor that, no, I was not going to enter a pre deal, even though I'd already specified that back when I had to submit a letter saying not guilty, or that I was uh, pleading not guilty, and they weren't ready to try it, um, and given the late hour, because it's you know, 9.30, and it was 9 o'clock at the time. Hold so, on, you went to court at 9 o'clock at night? They have it starting at 6 in the evening, because that's when the uh, the lawyers are, I guess, available. So, yeah, wow. it's 6 o'clock. Yeah, I know. So, um, for traffic court. And, uh, yeah, Wait a minute. The, no, we had somebody else call in the past who I think it was actually Tony Bones, one of the activists in uh, Missouri, and she had like an evening court too. And I forget what the uh, the reason for it was. It was almost like 
it, it felt to me like they've just got so many damn cases of people with tickets that they they need to schedule them later. But I forget what the reason was. Anyway. Well, I uh, would not be surprised. New Jersey is just the biggest uh, revenue generating, um, you know, monster that I've seen thus far. And as I watched, there were about 30 people in the courtroom and um, I got there, but I went last. So I got to hear one right after the other plead guilty. guilty. Uh, yes, and the most heinous one uh, was a mom, and it was really sad. She um, was given a ticket for not having her eight-year-old child properly seat belted, and child she got a child endangerment uh, ticket, or you know whatever, along with that. You know, well th- th- that would right. always interest me because, Michelle, you and I remember what it was like. I don't know what what it was like for Ian, but... I drove on the hood of the car. <laughs> right, right. I, uh, my mom's uh, Buick Century wagon, I would climb all over that. I'd play Star Wars figures in the oh, very yeah. back. I'd sit in the back sometimes when I wanted to, to read. I'd sit in front when I wanted to play with the radio station, AM. Um, you know, and it was... Th- these are my memories of this car, that, and it was uh, painted racing beige. <laughs> well, then uh, you also piled as many people as you needed to travel from one place to the other into the vehicle, even if it meant there were 10 of you in a, in a car fit for five. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. It was, so, in any case, this woman, um, she had two babies, though, and they were in their car seat. And the judge said, you know, what kind of a mother are you? And she says, well... I, my ex-husband did not drop off the lap seat, um, and I had to get the kids to school. And he said, well, you know, you, um, you endangered your child. And she said, okay, well, I'm guilty no matter what, because if I hadn't got the kids to school, then I'd be guilty of, um. Truancy or something. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, exactly, being a lousy parent. And that one really broke my heart because you could see that this woman was just, she's just kind of doing the best she can to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. And do, do you know if the kid was buckled in? in? Do you know if the kid was buckled in but just didn't have the little yeah. the little phone book underneath his butt? Or what was it? Co- correct. Correct. Buckled in but did not have the, Ridiculous. the uh, approved thing. Right. So she got $800 in fines total. Like her entire Holy grocery mackerel. So now this woman is, so, so the state did something even worse to her than anything that she was potentially doing in her own vehicle with her own children. She was not, um, you know, causing anyone else a problem, what have you. But as, as so that was $800. And then there Whoa, was another. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Three well, that's going to help her buy a new left. car seat. Giving the state eight hundred dollars. You know, also these rules tend to be based on uh, the child's age or weight, and this yeah. this older child. I wonder how they ascertained. Did the did the officer have a scale? Um, did they were they able to? I don't know. Cut the child in half mm. and count the rings. No, I they mean, I asked them all. No, no, they asked people to give to testify against themselves, which I find to be sort of reprehensible, especially if you're getting a child to testify against their parent. Mm. Well, there were, um, there were of the $3,000 in uh, fines that were collected in the two hours where people were, you know, saying guilty, um, most of them were improper use of cell, improper cell phone use. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah we're going to start seeing that in New Hampshire, unfortunately. That's one of the examples of the bad bills that passed in the last year. It's certainly not a utopia up here for freedom lovers yet. There's a lot that uh, we need to work on. And, uh, Michelle, you drove an hour and 45 minutes just to go to an arraignment tonight? Yeah. Well, no, I was supposed to be able to have my case heard. But they oh, you were, thought it was they, a full um, trial? Well, yeah, because they didn't expect every. They've never had anyone plead not guilty. They said to a traffic violation. They didn't know what to do. So, they, <laughs> so, the, so the, the lawyer, the lawyer for the state, the prosecutor wasn't prepared. So I said, well, then you should dismiss it. I don't have that option of showing up and saying I'm not prepared yep. and having you, you know, postpone it for me or whatever. So that was, you know, I got to tell everyone about jury nullification, everyone about not taking a plea deal. So. I'm going to make the I'm going to make them pay for my time in providing a soapbox for me to educate people, and I'm pissed, and that's what I'm going to do. But you know, I, you said Ian that this uh, this legislation that passed 
also Mark going and voting, which he tweeted to me today that he went and voted, that didn't make a difference? I don't think it made much of a difference, no. I suspect there's no... Um... I, I don't suspect anybody won by one vote. Um, I'm looking at the uh, the totals here. I, I don't think, uh, besides myself, I don't think anybody won that I voted for. <laughs> and I likely would have won if I hadn't have gone and voted for myself. And what you voted for yourself on was this thing called a delegate. It's not like an actual political office. It's uh, something within the Republican well, Party. Well, let's consider that this is a primary election, so nobody won a political office today. Good point. That's so, a good point. There may be some people who've technically kind of won because they may go on to an uncontested election. There's still a write-in possibility. Very unlikely, but yes. It's unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. You voted for voting today, and voting won. <laughs> voting always wins. Even I if didn't you vote, vote for, for voting, it. though, because what does voting even mean? In this case, this wasn't a government election. This was a club right. holding a— uh, Run by the government. The election's run by the indeed, government. Indeed, it is— it, it On is, behalf of the club. A, a club that, that has welfare uh, given to it. Hey, Michelle, Michelle wait, I got a question. Yeah. For Michelle, Michelle, did I see you on Twitter talking to the 38th director of the U.S. Mint about Bitcoin? I'm so pissed. I'm supposed to be at his book signing this evening down in Washington, D.C., but I did, they wouldn't give me a postponement for my arraignment. So, yes, Edmund Moy and I, we, we're, we're fast friends and buddies now. Michelle Seven, what's your uh, Twitter? Real quick, go. It's Bitcoin Bell, B-E-L-L. Wake up and smell Thanks. the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed results I have with your product. I've suffered with bouts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking one world away, I noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP. 
at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. We have enough time for you with your call. If you dial right now to 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. Join us on our website. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features there. We've got Keenvention coming up. Uh, it is going to be an intimate convention in here in beautiful Keene, New Hampshire. Johnny Ray, Mark, you guys were involved last year. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can actually go to keenvention.info and you can watch all the videos from Johnny Ray's panel of old school movers, people who've been here for a while. Uh huh. John, and then Mark was on the news media panel from last year. You're going to be heading up the news media panel. This that's year, right. Mark. Uh, so that's that's new. And also we got a couple new panels that are going to be coming out, like the Cop Block panel. That'll be a first time event and i think we're also going to have a charity panel which i actually just now broke the news on right here so that that news isn't even up yet at keenvention.info go there oh and there's something else i want to do uh the uh, the new hampshire primary was tonight there's all kinds of free state project participants who are apparently winning their primaries which is great news uh so we might actually try to put together a panel of primary winners people who have uh, made this happen you know let's bring in the people who've had some success and see what they have to say about their experiences. So we'll be talking about everything from politics to uh, civil disobedience, direct action, all over the map. Keenvention focuses on activism, and the people who speak at the Keenvention are people who are New Hampshire-based activists. So it's a real focus on what's happening here on the ground with the uh, the amazing scene of activism and community that we have up here amongst liberty-oriented folks. So come and experience it for yourself. It's 60 bucks. Get you in for the entire weekend. It's the weekend of October 31st through November 2nd. And uh, you want to grab your tickets. There's only 100 of them available in advance. Go to keenvention.info. It's 60 bucks with your credit card through Eventbrite. Or you can do a Bitcoin equivalent as well. So, again, go to keenvention.info. Looking forward to seeing many of you there. Uh, so, let's continue here. We've got Nathan. He's on the line in Texas via Skype. Hello, Nathan. Hey, everyone. It's funny you bring up the uh, the primary because your ring is... You just got cut out a little bit there. Your uh, your audio went away completely. You said something about I'm running as a Democrat and for for the uh, the gubernatorial race here in New Hampshire. Yeah, I was. Yeah, actually, you just since you brought it up, uh, does that mean that you're you have to show up at the primary and ask the other Democrats there? Hey, guys, can I be can I be your candidate or no? Nope, no, nope. in work? New Hampshire uh, to run for political office as a Republican or Democrat, all you have to do is pay the filing fee. You have to be a member of that party. And you have to uh, pay the filing fee, which in this case for me was one hundred dollars. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I guess I would have thought that someone at the I don't know someone at the National Democratic Party convention headquarters would say, "We got to go get those free staters out of New Hampshire." Oh, they'd love something. to keep free staters out of their elections, uh, and not just the Democrats, by the way. There's some old guard Republicans, the people who've been there for a long time, and the statist Republicans, if you will. There's plenty of them. Uh, they don't like the free staters being in, in their party either. Yeah, it's not much they can do about a it. A much larger percentage of Democrats care about the free staters than the Republicans. Um, yeah, that's probably true. Um, though right now, the current results, by the way, for anybody who's curious about my, my run for governor here in New Hampshire, I've got 4%. Solidly in second yep. place. You have uh, <laughs> driven all the way up from miserable to, um, to terrible. Hey man, I am oh. actually pretty happy with this. I mean, so I was what, hoping first place is at like 93, 94%. Maggie Hassan, the incumbent, has 94.2% uh 
Uh, I have 4%, and the other lady in the race has 1.8%. So I am uh, ensconced firmly in the second uh, place position here, which is what I was hoping for. I was hoping to beat the third place lady, and uh, I have succeeded in my political aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> you succeeded before the election because what you it's were hoping true. to do was, uh, you know, get a get a little bit of television time, a little bit of radio time, a little bit of newspaper time. Yeah, and that's what I got. And you actually got to uh, give a speech in front of the Republican um, uh, debate. But, yeah, their debate. So. so, yeah, I got to do all those things. And uh, the newspaper was a front page top of the fold headline, you know, above the fold headline. That's pretty good. For a hundred bucks, can't beat that for a uh, hundred bucks. Couple of little bit of news coverage on the radio. A few radio stations covered us, and then. So, some, how many people did vote for you? At this point, only fifty-two point eight percent. I'm not the, asking for percentages. I'm asking. No, 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 for, no. Only of that amount of the reporting has so come half in. Of, so, so we'll double the number. Okay, that's a rough thing you can do, I suppose. Eight hundred and sixty-seven right now. So sixteen hundred crazy people in New Hampshire voted for you. Excellent. Yeah, God has blessed them. The Democrats voted for you, mind <laughs> yeah, you. The yeah, Republicans not even Republicans allowed. Right. And this was, by the way, this was with no. Because I didn't vote for you. I am a registered Republican in the state of New Hampshire. I can't even go and give you a That's vote. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you actually could have uh, written me in for state senate. Did you do that? I did. Okay. Good. So uh, <laughs> if I get thirty-five votes in the state senate election, I'll show up as a Republican on the state senate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how bad things are here. I'd like to put something out. Uh, for those of you out there who are considering moving to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, you know, there really are some uh, some opportunities here to get the word out about freedom. The s Republicans didn't even bother running a candidate in the state Senate election here in Cheshire County. There's a reason for that. Well, the reason is they'll probably lose, but that doesn't, you know, there's there's liberty activists who could use that as a pulpit to talk about the ideas of freedom in the election. Indeed. And uh, I tried my best to get somebody to step up for that. Mark, I tried to get you to step up for it, but yep. you wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. And, uh, and nobody else would do it. Johnny Ray sure, w sure wouldn't do it, even though he might be qualified. I you, might run, but you I, I certainly won't vote. Are you doing seven? I wouldn't vote for really? myself. Really? You tease. Are you serious? You would, I might you would do run? it for the lols. Oh, that would be so awesome. All right. So, wait. How long have you been in New Hampshire? Was it 08? Uh-huh. So, this is going to be 14. It doesn't matter now. Yeah, well, I'm just planning for next year. I want to make sure he's qualified because you have to be have li having lived here for seven years to run for things like state senate or governor, for instance. So I was just really disappointed that the Republicans didn't throw anybody in against this incumbent. So now the current lady in the Senate, th who's the woman who I talked about the other night on the air, who goes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. whenever you talk to her, mm-hmm. <laughs> So she's going to go through. She's going to sail through. Nobody's opposing her in this election. She'll spend. She'll have to spend zero dollars campaigning. She won't even try. She won't even have to try. Whereas if someone had just thrown their hat in the ring, just said, "All right, ah, screw it. I'll go ahead and throw in." At least then she'd have to maybe be a little bit concerned. She'd then have to maybe spend some money on some signs, some door hangers, spend some, get some volunteer hours out there and have to put some effort in. So there's plenty of opportunities here. There's not enough activists here in New Hampshire yet to fill all the races. I remember Daryl told me, and I don't know what the, the statistics are for this year, but in a previous year, uh, I think two years ago, there was something like 40 percent or some ridiculously high number of state house races that had no uh, challenge to the incumbent or something like that. So there's plenty of opportunity, plenty of political opportunity here. I think before I run for office, I'm going to need to prove myself as competent for government work in some way by either taking a nap, imprisoning somebody in my basement for <laughs> a couple of months, or killing someone. So, okay, are you just teasing, Johnny Ray? Are you really considering doing a political run? I, I for the lulls because yeah. that's that's the reason to do a political run, as far as I'm concerned. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Right. I think Vermin Supreme is uh, he's ideologically pure as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I love Vermin Supreme. In fact, uh, Vermin Supreme is the guy who runs for president every term uh, with rubber boot on his head. And promising unicorns or ponies? Ponies for everybody right, and yeah. mandatory toothbrushing. <laughs> Nathan, uh, other thoughts? Anything else you want to share? Go ahead. Well, in the Padilla story, there's something I've always believed, and I don't necessarily have a lot of practical argument to back it up, but I've always thought that you can tell how someone uh, would treat you by the way they treat those weaker than themselves. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they would torture someone like Padilla makes me think that if they thought they could get away with it, then they would want to torture you and me. They sure would. Thanks for the call tonight, Nathan.
a happy note. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Here's the quick story from uh, the PayPal Bitcoin thing that we've been teasing for a couple nights. This from coinfire.cf regarding Bitcoin, the decentralized currency. The speculation regarding a PayPal integration with Bitcoin has been nearly out of control for the past several weeks. CoinFire has once again been provided an exclusive direct scoop regarding the integration of Bitcoin with PayPal subsidiary Braintree. Uh, apparently Braintree is some sort of related thing for pay I don't know how they relate to a PayPal. I've I don't know the specifics either, but this says if a subs to me what it says is that if a subsidiary of PayPal is going to start taking Bitcoin, then PayPal is going to start taking Maybe Bitcoin. Maybe so. Then eBay is going to start taking uh, Bitcoin. Braintree's and press material says they power billions of dollars in mobile and online payments for some of the world's fastest growing companies. The most reputable merchants built by developers for developers. Our full stack payments platform can be integrated in minutes, but Blah, blah, blah. Braintree is going to be taking Bitcoin, and apparently that's a big deal. They're going to allow the first $50,000 worth of transactions to be entirely fee-free. And they're calling it PayPal One-Touch Integration with Braintree, which will allow merchants to get involved with this. So it's not really PayPal, but it's kind of PayPal. So it's yeah, it seems like it's good news. We'll see you tomorrow night. Online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Stop. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, thinks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,266, silver opened at $19.16, and Bitcoin is trading around $467.50. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at expresscoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, Bitcoin access will soon be available to PayPal merchants. This comes as PayPal, owned by eBay, announced their new OneTouch wallet, a Bitcoin-integrated cell phone application. Just after the official announcement at the TechCrunch Disrupt SF conference by Bill Reddy of eBay's Braintree, PayPal posted a Twitter announcement with a link to a PayPal YouTube video discussing the new Bitcoin-integrated OneTouch wallet. The messaging includes the term people money and describes Bitcoin as unbound by banker bill. 
The video opened with the sentiment that by working for ourselves and empowering each other, we can change the world. The video is titled PayPal Voices. We are the people who have built a whole new place to live, dream, and be. We employ ourselves and vote with our money. Our phone is our wallet. We can spend Bitcoin with a tap without a pocket. PayPal is one of many large companies to jump on board with Bitcoin this year. They include Overstock, Expedia, Dell, and Dish Network. They're among the nation's leading Bitcoin giants, and the question must be asked, who will be next? Newly released internal IRS emails provide more details on how IRS official Lois Lerner dealt with the scandal surrounding delayed tax exemptions for conservative groups. The 1,760 emails show Lerner attempting to avoid an investigation by Treasury Department auditors. Despite public apologies, Lerner emailed her co-workers to let them know they were being beaten up by the press for all the wrong reasons. Lerner had been held in contempt of Congress for refusing to testify about her role in the discriminatory practices that targeted conservative groups, including branches of the Tea Party. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And today's edition of the Liberty Beat brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM located in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com, the Liberty Beat. This past week, notorious Liberty activists Michael Cargill and Adam Kokesh found themselves in the national news yet again. Owner of Central Texas Gunworks and Liberty Beat sponsor Cargill was featured on USA Today about merchants accepting Bitcoin. At his Austin business, you can purchase a firearm with Bitcoin or check out their on-site Bitcoin ATM. Kokesh, host of Adam vs. the Man, was featured in the Washington Post and other news outlets after he was given a suspended sentence, plus time served, for his 2013 gun charges in Washington, D.C. Last summer, in an act of civil disobedience, Kokesh videotaped himself cocking what appears to be a loaded shotgun in Washington, D.C. Police raided his home and put him in a cage for over three months. He was released from jail last fall when he pled guilty to unlawful gun and ammunition charges. He has since finished his first book, Freedom, available on Amazon.com. The Department of Justice has released new information detailing the process they claim led to the arrest of Ross Ulbricht, the alleged identity behind Red Pirate Roberts, founder of the Silk Road Marketplace. Ulbricht was arrested in October of 2013 at the San Francisco Public Library for allegations of drug trafficking, computer hacking, money laundering, and engaging in a criminal enterprise. The DOJ stated they did not violate Ulbricht's Fourth Amendment rights when they gained access to the Silk Road servers because they claimed they tracked the servers through a leak on the website. The DOJ statement said the leak was due to an apparent misconfiguration of the user login interface by the site administrator. The apparent leak led the authorities to the server through the IP address. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Now accepting Bitcoin, online, rrbi.co, or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, September 9th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. A report finds it's not okay to just start talking to people you don't know, and a monstrosity is created in the Frito-Lay Laboratory. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local newborn Nathan Jameson surprised the world earlier this morning by irrevocably losing all faith in humanity after just six days. Though he's not yet developed the capacity for speech, spokespeople for the six-day-old baby have confirmed he already knows that humans cannot be trusted and that most people lack self-awareness about their own destructive tendencies. While most people need around 30 or 40 years to truly understand that the vast majority of humanity is shallow and irredeemable, maybe Nathan's convinced that he has seen all that he needs to see. People have been nice and even brought him toys and presents, but the fact is, Nathan knows they're all full of shit. And in this week's science report, botanists discover trees are all slowly trying to strangle each other. In other news, a fun-loving turtle is all business when it comes to feeding time, and a party-goer rolls a couple of fat burritos to pass around. This is the Onion News Network. What's going on, world? This is Derek J. You're listening to Peace News Now. We're live this Tuesday, 
September 9th, 2014. You can call in, share your thoughts, stories of peaceful resistance by dialing in 443-424-8347 or send a Skype contact request to user Peace News Now. Your contact request will, of course, be accepted, and I'll put you on the air. You can also tweet me, at Derek J. Me, or watch, listen, chat online at DerekJ.me or LRN.FM. That's the Liberty Radio Network. So good to be with you. This show is a live call-in show, obviously, and uh, we talk about stories of peaceful resistance here. Coming up, we've got stories about cop blockers arrested in Arlington, Texas. Reddit declares itself a new form of government. What millennials think about politics. In fact, I was down at a college today campaigning for a millennial <laughs> among millennials, and I found a lot of voter apathy, but you probably already knew that. <laughs> well, we've got the studies to confirm it, plus a recap of today's outreach for James Cleveland, Robin Hood of Keene. Uh, he had a primary today and lost, spoiler alert, but... <laughs> You know, uh, power to him for trying. Seems like he had a lo lot of fun. I know being a part of his campaign, I had a lot of fun. Uh, we'll discuss that. Panera Bread is now asking their customers not to bring guns into their store. We have that story. And eBay announces its first foray into Bitcoin with Braintree. What does it all mean? We've got these stories and more, plus your calls Let's get right into it by starting with the cop watchers arrested for video recording in Arlington, Texas. This story was published today, September 9th, 2014. Take a listen. This from Fox News. Cop watchers at scenes and investigations. They videotape and often haggle and hassle officers. Well, now, after the first arrest, the police chief is talking about the concerns and how they have been handling these situations. Brandon Todd is in our Fort Worth newsroom right now with an interview you'll see only on Fox 4. Brandon. Yeah, Chief Will Johnson sat down with me and discussed this problem that has been going on for several months. He said there's a fine line between shooting video and interfering with a police investigation. And he said this weekend that line was crossed. Do not pull this is the video that cop watchers are calling an assault. It's posted on Facebook. Saturday night, Arlington police pull a driver over. The Tarrant County Peaceful Streets Project is rolling video. And at some point, Janie Lucero is arrested. I'm going to run the reins. Lucero is the wife of Corey Watkins, president of Open Carry Tarrant County, an outspoken critic of Arlington police. He was arrested that night, along with fellow watcher Joseph Ty. An officer has to be able to do the job that the community has asked them to do. Arlington Police Chief Will Johnson says his officers are used to being recorded on camera and seeing videos like this posted online. In this particular instance, he says his officers on scene asked around 20 or so people, many of them shooting video of the traffic stop, to step back to a certain distance to give his officers room to work. With any type of, of external variables, whether it might be cars or roadway or speed or people, pedestrians, that might distract them from their ability to do their job. Normally, all we see is video posted by the cop watchers. But in this case, Arlington police released some of their video to Fox 4 News from the dash camera of a backup officer. This is what the officer saw when he arrived on scene. The person you hear yelling at the officer is Corey Watkins. Johnson says the watchers were surrounding his officers from three sides. And as you see in this video, Corey Watkins was armed with a black powder pistol, which is legal to open carry in Texas. That they're responsible for the safety of those that are on the scene that they are conducting. And we have to make sure that, that, that all parties' interests are, are represented. In that. The attorney for Watkins and his wife, Alex Kim, says Watkins was minding his business, complied with officers' requests, and was arrested anyway. They were quiet. They weren't disturbing anybody. They were on a uh, sidewalk on a public street just recording the police like they're entitled to do. Kim says Watkins was arrested in the same area he was asked to stand by police. And then one officer came around and grabbed her individually and started pulling her out. And that's when she jerked away. My inclination is things mostly because she didn't even know who was grabbing her. It was just kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Chief Johnson says he has asked for dialogue with these groups. 
We haven't been able to, to uh, get anyone to accept that invitation. We're still open to doing that. Now, Chief Johnson also pointed out that that night, two times prior to that incident, there were traffic stops that were being recorded uh, by multiple people. And he says, Steve, in those particular cases, there were no issues whatsoever. Two questions quickly on that first one. Were the same people involved in the protest or possibly different at the different locations? Uh, it's likely that they were the same people, okay. uh, a group of people uh, gathered together videotaping, but uh, he, he had no way of knowing uh, what names or what specific people were at all three of those. Got it. And if our viewers are watching closely, they've seen that there is a, an Arlington police officer recording, not just the dash cam, holding a camera. Does the chief talk about why they're doing this? Right, you do see that on one of those. Uh, he didn't address that particular officer, but did say it isn't uh, any sort of directive that he's given an off, uh, his officers to go ahead and start videotaping. Instead, uh, something that they would do on their own. He suggested it might even be that that officer would, was wanting to protect himself and make sure that if the dash camera isn't picking up something, that he is. Okay, Brandon Todd in Fort Worth Newsroom, thank you. Okay, so there you have it. The police officer was recording video of the cop watchers. Uh, why? Well, as the news reports, because he wants to protect himself. He wants to create an objective record of what's happening in the world around him. So why is it wrong when people do it to the police? Uh, it should be a question that we're asking ourselves. The Arlington, Texas cop blockers uh, certainly have a lot of courage to get close into the police interactions. They're they're standing on the sidewalk, as reported by the news media, saying he was arrested. Corey Watkins was arrested in the very same place he was standing, uh, told uh, by police to stand back. This happens a lot. If you've done any cop blocking, uh, police will often acknowledge you for filming them and then say, stand here or so, you know, like, so that they feel safe. I can understand that. They feel a lot of pressure in their job, even though... The likelihood that uh, a person is going to do harm to them is very low, and the likelihood that they're going to do harm to others is very high. Uh, still, they 